a circuit sniffy, try and look busy, all right? Duty calls, mate. Morning, mate. Ready. How's my little Dutch, yes? Lots of cheer behind here. Oh, flowers. For me? But enough for Stanley, Hardy. Here. I called into the shop and Maggie May said you were feeling a bit under the weather. So I got Sniffy to drive round here with the sirens blazing. A little bit of morning sickness, is it? Oh, fancy you knowing about that. One of the tribulations of being a mum to be. And me. Dad to be. Hey, it still hasn't percolated the old grey matter, you know. Is it for real? Pinch me. Oh! It's for real, Eddie. <laughs> oh, you'll never know the relief when you said you were pleased. I was dreading telling you what you'd say, what you'd do. I mean, some blokes would have cleared off. Yeah, well, I did think about you in the Foreign Legion, but then the thought of all that sand and not a boozer inside just mirages, you know. <laughs> not changed your mind than having slept on it? Slept? Lay awake after night with me head going like a steam hammer. It's not me for six, you know. Didn't get much sleep myself, either. Mind you, I ought to continue the line of Scouse Yates, you know. I owe it to mankind. <laughs> I do love you, Eddie. Well, go on, say it. You can if you try. I love you and all, Marion. Honest Indian. Hey, let's go. Republic awaits. Ta-da. Right, love. Take care. What's that for? A nipper. Ta-da. Swan down for two nights, haven't he? Left me on me Todd. It's gone to our cellars. Shame. Grounds for divorce, isn't it? Desertion for two days. Used to be two years. And didn't you want to go to your travers, Mr. Ogden? No, I don't like relations. They're all scoundrels. <gasps> oh, I wish I had more relations. Because I hardly get any visitors. I'd be lost without Harriet to talk to. Hey. Pet canary. Budgie. Mm. Hey, what happened to that um, Vincent fella? He's telling he's not enough to you know. He like real ale. Oh, he migrated up north. Opened his own brewery. Did he? No, he didn't. He's living in Saddleworth. And his name was, is Victor. Ah, oh, that's right, Victor. I knew it was some poncy name. Hello. Hello. Speaking of oh, which... Oh, I don't want to discuss Victor with, if you don't mind. Oh, but you didn't mind Auntie Rita doing the dirty work yesterday, finding out he was still single and fancy-free. Mind you, I could have swore he'd have phoned back, just to make sure you'd recovered. Recovered? Well, there's nothing wrong with me. You were at the dentist, weren't you? Oh, told him grab the lot out. Oh, Rita! I'm you only joking, it. only joking. Yes, that's your trouble. You, you joke about everything, don't you? It's Valley and Victor and Dopey Derrick and Maeve the Rave. So what does that make me? Rotten Rita, the red-headed rat bag? Precisely. Oh, you've a vicious tongue in your head. I think I could sue you for libel. It's slander. That and all. But joking aside, I would still rather see you and Mr Pendlebury all lovey-dovey again. So go on, phone him up. For my sake. No, it's his duty to contact me. And don't you go phoning him and cracking on that it's him ringing me. Would I do that? Yes. I want putting down. Precisely. There you go, libeling me again. I don't know. Oh, Emily. It's nice to see a human being again. Uh, morning. Uh, you know I'm organising an autumn fair. Well, as Ken's left the centre, uh, I'm at a loss who to contact. Do you mean like a uh, flea market and that we stole? Oh, look, no. Mr Sugden, you know, the new caretaker at the oh. centre, he's very obliging. He was most helpful to me over my evening classes. Oh, mm. why, you took quite a shine to passionate Percy, didn't you? Listen, maybe it's him you should oh, be phoning. Peter, will you shut up? You're getting very boring. What on earth's the matter with Mavis? I don't know, Emily. Must be something you said. Morning, Mrs. Walker. Morning, Deb. First in today, eh? I suppose Betty Kins is still snoring. Morning. In. Oh, morning, Betty Love. <laughs> Elizabeth tells me she's thinking of starting her Christmas shopping today. Oh, good idea, kiddo. I might just come with you. I still got some prezzies for last Christmas to get. I've been avoiding some folk all year. That's for me. Oh, aye. Sorry, Mrs. Walker. Not your premium bones. Mm. Morning, ladies. All the lunch, of course. Morning, Omar. Hi, Fred. Do you fancy a couple of? No, I'm not scrounging this morning. I'll go and open up Mrs. Walker before the punters start hammering. Not like that, I hope. Like what? 
you haven't shaved. You look like an escaped convict, an ugly one at that. Well, I had a late night last night dinner. A few bevies down by the docks and sort of overslept. Anyway, Mrs. Walker, you were ages on the, uh, well, in the bathroom. I, I was thinking of sporting a beard. My face favours a beard. What do you think? Out that covers up your fizzog gets my vote. Don't touch to the old Ian Botham's, eh? Good old Ian. <laughs> Grow a beard by all means, Fred, but in your own time, not mine. Huh? Up to that bathroom, Fred. And while you're at it, polish your head and clean your tooth. Oh, flare it with it. <laughs> there, do you have to keep taunting Fred like that? It's the only perk of the job, Mrs Walker. Some folk get luncheon vouchers, some folk get a company car. I've got Fred face and I've not swapped him. You don't get many offers. <laughs> Point taken, Mrs Walker. Once more into the breach, dear Fred. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh. I thought they'd never go. It's from Newton and Ridley. Some sort of idea about giving the staff uniforms. No, I don't think so, Mrs. Walker. I was an usherette for a few weeks at the Star Cinema and I felt very uh, conspicuous. Yeah, that's it. It's a daft idea, isn't mm. it? Now, how would you feel to come and do a little bit of early Christmas shopping with me? Well, actually, dear, I do prefer shopping in Chester. Oh. And I thought I might persuade Fred Face <laughs> to give me a run out in his rover. You're a little devil, aren't you? I am, aren't I? <laughs> It's Mrs. Bishop from number three, isn't it? Uh, yes, that's right. First is at your service. Like to come in? Uh, no, thank you. It's just in the nature of an inquiry. I've been a hospital visitor for quite a while, and rather impetuously I've volunteered to organise an autumn fair to help raise much-needed funds. Well, normally I'd have contacted Mr Barlow, but... Uh... Uh, you've come to the right person. Now, there's a Mr Mortimer taking over from Mr Barlow, but uh, as he has another centre under his wing, I don't see much of him. Prefer it that way. Uh, is the hall free for a Saturday afternoon in the not too distant future? Oh, I'm afraid not. It's the busiest time of the year. Oh, what a pity. I don't want to let the hospital down. For you, Mrs. Bishop. I'll see what strings I can pull. Oh, I'd be most grateful. It's my pleasure to help such a charming lady. So leave it with me. Oh, thank you. Bye. Bye. Ah, oh, here they come. The Fred G fan club. What the be, ladies? Two bottles of lager, is it? Ah, uh, and clean glasses this time. Ah, uh, well, we'll give you dirty glasses, see, to remind you of all. <laughs> I'll get these, Vera. Well, I'm not arguing, kiddo. Since Sarah Jack stopped moonlighting on them taps and went all on, it's, it's always broke. It's just some lousy tippers about. You can say that again. Hey, as your brand managed to sell his garage, love, he'd be load off his mind, wouldn't he? Oh, he's not selling now, love. Vera, won't you show up? I can answer for myself, you know. Kids are selling house Betty so as to clean his garage nets off. You know, oh. clean slate. Yeah, they're gonna live with Ivy. Well, she's been a bit lonely lately. Be company for her. Vera, will you belt up, Vera? I can't speak for myself, you know. You're talking as if I'm not here. Ah, oh, here they there. come. <laughs> Love's young dream. Ignore him, Eddie. A pint and a bit of lemon, please. Right over it. You are right, Marion? You look a bit peaky. I'll oh, touch one down, I tell you. Oh. Well, I'm not surprised knocking about with a dead leg like you. You know, if you two went to Wales, Maid Marion here would be known as uh, Willis the Flowers. Hey, and you'd be known as uh, Yates the Rubbish. Hey, <laughs> that's a good, isn't it? Yates the Rubbish. <laughs> Very good, that, Fred. <laughs> You'd be Fred the Dregs. Oh, nice one, that, Eddie. Eh? Hear that, Betty? Fred the Dregs. Me and my day has that. <laughs> oh, get knotted, the lot of you. Fred, a word. Now. <laughs> Fred, Fred, I will not, I repeat, not tolerate you insulting customers in that fashion. Now, do you hear me? Well, it, it, it was Yates, Mrs. Walker. I mean, look at him. Fred, 
Have you ever seen yourself from the customer side of the bar? No. Well, I have. And I can assure you, it is not a pretty sight. So no more insults. And that is my last warning. Hey, what did, uh, what did Koo want, eh? Uh, uh. No, thanks. Not anymore. Oh. Right, well, I'm not having you suffering on your own, then. That's me for the dreaded way till next day. Uh, May. Thanks, Nicky. We're a good team, you me, aren't we? First division. Hey, our Tony back in the pool used to do a great line in cheap prams and push chairs, you know. No, thanks. I'll need a pram with wheels on it. Listen, you don't know our Tony. Give me enough reddies and come up with a pram with a kidney. <laughs> anyway, listen, I'd better get back to work. Oh, John, take the day off. Put your feet up. No, it'll do me good to get out. See you later, love. Good day. Oh, well done. It makes you sick, eh? Oh, I think it's lovely. It's nice to see people without a care in the world, you know. I don't know what you're looking to smoke for, Yates. Have you been promoted to a bigger, smellier rubbish dump or something? Fred, me old mate. It's a feeling far too sensitive for a fat slob like you to ever appreciate. Give us another pint, will you, Betty? OK, my love. <laughs> Hello, Mrs. Bishop. Now, the first available date, December the 10th. Oh, how disappointing. I can't really... Now, don't worry yourself. Now, I've had a word with the Weight Watchers Club and I've persuaded them to fight the flab on a Friday for a change. So you name the Saturday you would like and it's yours. Well, oh, I'm extremely grateful. I'm very impressed. I shall need a list of your requirements, trestles for the use of, chairs, etc., etc. Yeah, well... Uh, uh... Yeah, you better come in. Oh, thank you. Eddie, you do mean what you've been saying about the baby. Wanting it and that. I mean, it's not just for my sake, is it? Of course it isn't. I mean, I do admit it's the biggest shock since Stan bought me a double, but the more I get to think about being a dad, the more I like it. Only there are other options we could talk about. What other options? Well, I mean, some unmarried girls have their babies and they bring them up on their own. You know, one parent families. Well, lots of girls do it nowadays. Nippers need a mum and a dad. It's the way nature designed it. And what's good enough for Mother Nature is good enough for me. Thanks, Sadia. I was hoping you were going to say that. Well, there is another option we could think about. What other option? Abortion. It did pass through my mind, Eddie. Oh, Matthew. Only for a second, honest. I mean, I'm over the moon at the prospect of becoming a mum. I am, really. But we didn't plan for this baby, did we? Well, it must be my fault it's happened. Not entirely. <sighs> Eddie, it's just that I don't want you to feel that I've trapped you. Trapped me? Marion, do you know where I was eight years ago this very night in cell 405 D block, Her Majesty's Prison, Walton? Lying in that bunk night after night, not sleeping, just thinking. That's when I felt trapped. It's a feeling I'll never forget the rest of my life. Eddie. And when I was released, not a soul to meet me. I felt even more trapped. I may as well have been back inside. I had nothing. Nobody could have been more lonely. I thought I'd missed out on all this. You're the best thing that's ever happened to me. And you and, and the baby and... Well, that's living. I mean, that's life, Marion. 
I don't think I could go on without you. I don't was honest. Oh, Eddie. Finish your Christmas shopping, Betty. Hey, what you bought me at? Have a echo's like. I'm getting started. The last minute rush, same as every year. Hey, Betty. What? You could at least have a deco at these outfits. We're getting out else free from Newton and Ridley. Go on, better love. Here's for it. Get off anything for a quiet life. You'll not regret it. Wait till you see me in them smart grey slacks and that maroon blazer with gold epaulets. Say, I'll look like an airline pilot. <laughs> oh, you'll look like a traffic warden. Mm. <laughs> Whereas me and Bettykins, in our low-cut frilly ensemblers, black skirts split to reveal our milky white thighs. Oh, little and large. Correction. Little and very large. That does it. I am not parading up and down this bar being jeered and scoffed at. Why not? Lynch has done it for years. Really? Big gob. <laughs> Truce. Yeah, well, we're muckers, really, aren't we? Right, Fred. No more aggro. Oh, hey, they're gorgeous. <laughs> oh, uh, Mrs. Walker, Betty's changed her mind. She's now dead keen to try on them Newton and Ridley outfits, isn't she, Fred? Yeah, I can't wait, Mrs. Walker. Shall I phone Sarah Ridley? I'll tell you what, if Sarah's had out to do with them outfits, they'll be dead good. If she fancies me, does that Sarah Ridley? They'll, they'll, have, they'll have style and class, they will. Oh, not again, Fred. Sarah Ridley fancies you about as much as I do, probably less. Oh, jealous are you, Lynch? Hey, it's a long time since we had one of them licensed vittlers do, Mrs. Walker. Give us a nod and another one, you know. I have still not recovered from the last one, Fred. So you'll phone the brewery then, Mrs. Walker? I will, but I'm very surprised that Elizabeth has changed her mind. She was quite adamant this morning. Well, it's blonde here, isn't it, Mrs. Walker? When she gets a tongue, she happened to make Arthur Scargill vote Conservative. Hey, Fred Face, what happened to our truce? Oh, knickers to the truths. Hello, Ivy. No bingo tonight. Oh, yes, I'll not miss that, love. I'm missing beer in half an hour. I thought I'd just cut round and say hello, you know. Where's our friend? Is he working? No, he's upstairs with Mr Pollard, who's come to put a price on our little home. Should make a killing. 20,000 at least. Oh, you only paid 13,000 for it, didn't you? I've been calling capitalists like you all my life. No, good luck to you, love. Uh, by the way, I've been going to spare bedroom. Oh, You're lucky. Very well built these houses. Not like some have the dubious task of valuing. Yes, what kids have looked after, and I'll tell you what, our brain's done wonders with that garden. It's a quick sale we're after. What do you think? Well, we'll draw up a detailed specification sheet and it'll fetch around 18 to 18 and a half thousand. You what? That's not much more than they paid for it. What about inflation? Listen, there's houses on our road and they're fetching 12,000 and terrorists done pushing 100 years old. We were hoping. 20,000, Mr. Pollard. I mean, it's a lovely little house. 20,000, yes, that's possible if you're prepared to dig your heels in and wait. Yes, well, they are. Now, you, you'd still be in this Christmas, and I couldn't guarantee you'd not be eating your Christmas dinner here in 1984. We can't wait that long. We need the money. So 18 to 18 and a half thousand is okay by us, Mr. Pollard. They like robbery. You're not buying property, I understand. No, no, they're coming to live with me. Oh, well, best of luck anyway. We'll be sending potential buyers around later in the week. Bye. Thanks, bye. Bye-bye. Brian, the whole idea of selling was to get enough brass love to be able Mom, to Mum, will you shut up and listen? The longer we stay here, the further my garage goes into the red. A few more months and I've had it. And second, don't start interfering before we move in with you, otherwise we'll all regret selling the flaming house. Rather quiet this evening. Soccer on telly, Mrs Walker. Wouldn't mind watching it, because it's like a morgue in here. Still, I suppose I'll have to be content with the highlights on telly. Well, those wearing red shirts are losing 3-0, if that's any help. Oh, thanks very much, Mrs. Walker. No trouble. There's a couple of swingers alive in the place up. Engine bracket. <laughs> oh, sorry, Mrs. Walker. No, actually, I quite like that one. Now, which one would you say was Dame Evadne? Emily, I presume. Oh, Emily, yes. Oh, Emily, definitely, Mrs. Walker. I wonder who'll buy this place, eh? Seems funny to think of other folk living in our own. Yeah. I hope we'll be as happy as we have. Yeah, we are, don't we? Just a few little disagreements. Well, it's all your fault. You ought to agree with me all the time. Save a lot of aggro. Oh, I'll thump <laughs> you. Knock some sense into you, as my mum used to I've say. I've heard about women like you who batter the poor, defenceless husbands, but I'll not put up with it. I'll get the law on to you. Or better still, me mother. Oh, <laughs> no. I remember being dead lonely, you and all, when you were out east. And Nicky's first Christmas. I'll always remember that. Yeah. And your mum kipping on this couch snoring away. That must be where you get it from. I don't snow. What? You've heard old Tatler when he nods off in the rovers and all the glasses start vibrating. I will thump you, you know. It's your last <laughs> warning. 
I remember some not happy times here and all. Remember that so-called babysitter, Sharon Rotten Gaskill? No, I can't say I do. <laughs> That's what's her name, Susie Rotten Birch. Mm, two people I don't want to meet again in Ari, if ever. Well, I don't know, though. Oh, right, that does it. Oh, <laughs> saved by the bell. <laughs> Might be somebody wanting to buy me, huh? Hello, Brian Tilsley. It's only me, love. Hello, Mum. I've just phoned you to tell you that I've got for eight pound at house it. Oh, fantastic. Well, when I say eight, I've only finished up before because me and Vera, we share out, we win, you know. Anyway, I thought I'd just tell, me, tell you my good news, you know. I'll see you tonight. Yeah, night, Mum. Night. See you all right or what? Calling me up to tell me she won four measly quid on the bingo. <clears throat> you are insensitive, Brian. Ivy rang because she's gone home to an empty house. No Bert. What's the point of a bit of good luck if you've no one to share it with? Oh, I never thought of that. That's why you ought to be so grateful. Have a meet to go home to. I mean, all I've got is a cream bum what snores all night. Oh, right, that does it. I'm going to thump you good yeah? and proper. Yeah? Well, you'll have to catch me first. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I could sit here all night, all tranquil and lethargic. Mm, I know. Ain't life strange? Say that again. You know, Hilda reckons it's all mapped out in the stars. Just think, 16 years from now, I'll be puffing on a big fat Havana cigar, standing in the hallowed trophy room at Anfield, while my son signs on for Liverpool as their deadly new striker. Another Keegan or Dalgleish. Hey, hang on a minute. Might be a little lass. Oh, yeah. Well, she can sign on for Everton. <laughs> Diana Yates. That's a nice name, isn't it? Yeah. I'm named after royalty, you know. Or is it royalty that's named after me? Hey, we could call her Hilda. Or Winifred after your mum. Oh, don't mention me, Mum, Eddie. I'm dreading telling her. She's like the Mary White House of Berry. Penny for them. One little item you haven't bothered to mention last night or today. What's that? You and me, Eddie. Are we getting married? 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 Of course we're getting married, you great pike and Before you know where you are, you'll have a 50 carat gold ring on your finger and you'll be Mrs George Edward Yates. Hey, I wonder if Westminster Abbey's free. <laughs> Oh. The estate agents, they've got a board up. What do you think all the hammering was? Thought it was next door. Well, it wasn't. We've got a nice little for sale notice out there. Viewing strictly by appointment only. We never said that. No, I know, but leave it. Otherwise, you get folk knocking on the door just to have a nosy around. Yeah. You know something, love? Maybe we should have pushed for 20,000. Oh, look, Brian, you've agreed once. Let's just leave it at that and get rid quick. I mean, you heard what he said. You asked for 20,000, and by the time you get your money, what with inflation and that, it's only worth 18,000 anyway. Whereas if you ask a reasonable price, you get a quick sale and it's better for us. Oh, she knows, you know. <laughs> I know as much as you. Well, that's not much to talk about. Yeah. Well, sure up and eat your egg. If you want something to worry about, worry about us going to live with your mum. Ah, she'll be all right. She's not the same woman since my dad did his disappearing act. No. We'll settle down. Of course we will. Right, I'm off. What are we done? Ah, well, there's a thought. I mean, you could sell this place by the morning, couldn't you? They could move in after dinner. You better call me up at the garage. Tell me which room I've got to go to. You can laugh. I am doing. Right. Mwah. See you about six. Yeah. Could I have a bit of paper to try them on? Try them as much as you like, as long as you buy them. I'm not putting them back in stock with half the ink gone. Oh, don't worry yourself. They'll do me just fine. Give us a tool, we'll finish the job. <laughs> That's what they say. <laughs> ah, they do, don't they? I'm making some posters out. Oh, very nice. Ah, you know, for this autumn fair, though, in the centre. Oh, for Emily. That's right, Mrs. Bishop. Yeah. Very nice lady. I understand she's a widow. Yes, yeah. very tragically. Well, you can see she's had some sorrow in her life still. Mm. Comes to us all. Oh, it does that. And I'll feel a lot happier when I get 30 pence out of you. Oh, I'm your pence. Oh, the pence. 30p. Do you realise how much that is? Six shillings. Who'd have thought the day had come when we had to pay six shillings for a couple of little pens? Now, don't start you know, on actually, that lot. Actually, though, when you think of how much wages have increased over the What did I tell you? Once she starts on this game, she never knows when to stop. Well, thank you for your custom, and I hope all your posters get framed and hung in town hall. Well, you never know your luck. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. You 
needn't have been so abrupt. I was only trying to start an intelligent conversation. With him? Now, with him. Oh, do you mind? Talking about me, were you? Well, men in general, Fred. Or at least them you can have an intelligent conversation with. Oh, that's what I mean, talking about me. Well, of course, <laughs> I always say, if you want an intelligent fella, look no further than Fred G. And reads a lot, don't you? Well, do me share, yeah. He does. Uh, Dickens, Shakespeare, War and Peace. Come for your tidbits, have you, love? Yeah, it's ready. Of course. And may I say, you're looking very sharp today. Oh, that's nothing. You wait you see our uniforms. Uniforms? Where? At the Rovers? Yeah, courtesy of Newton Ridley. Tell you what, if that Sarah Ridley's had out to do with them, they'll be good. Got a touch of class as that lady. Oh, I can't wait. Well, grit your teeth. Won't be long. See ya. Ta-ra. Morning. Morning. Do you know you left the front door open? Yeah, I know. I've just got them knocking. Do you know how long it takes you to have these tea leaves to perpetrate a robbery? Do you? Because I'll tell you. I don't know. Well, you should want to know. It's benefiting from my experience. I don't want to know about your experience. I'm not interested in what you were. It's what you've got to be that interests me. A dad. And a husband. Oh, yeah. And a husband. How are you this morning? Fine. No way. I'm fine, Eddie. You sure you're not feeling a bit sick? Eddie, whether you like it or not, love, you're going to be a dad, so you better get used to the idea. Yeah. It's not easy, though, is it? Do you know, when I used to think about what I'd do with my life, you know, like you do in the middle of the night, I thought I'd just drift through life doing nothing useful. You've done a lot for me, you know. There was a lot needed doing. Yeah, you can say that again. And there I am, about to have a lad. Hey, it is going to be a lad, isn't it? That's what you want. Well, I don't mind. I don't do. Only if it is a lad, I'll have a few do's and don'ts for him. Mainly don'ts. Listen, there's other things to think about before that, like the wedding. Yeah. I've been thinking about that. Look, uh, I've got to go now, but uh, how about we have dinner here and we can talk it over? Yeah, I'll be back about half twelve, eh? Bring him some Chinese, eh? Great. Love ya. You too. Oh, I wouldn't, Lily. You didn't wake up so early. You wouldn't be tired at this time, would you? <coughs> up you go. Come <coughs> Trouble you love, but I wondered if I could have a look round. Did the estate agent send you? Do you know I spent the last 20 minutes in that phone booth round the corner? <laughs> oh, isn't he a lovely little lad? What's your name then? This is Nicky. Oh, that is a nice name, isn't it? Could I get through? I mean, every time I dialed it, we're engaged. So I said, well, it's a bit silly not knocking when you're on doorstep. Mind you, if I've come at a bad time. No, no. <laughs> I was just going to put him down for an hour. He's a bit uh, fratchety. Uh, wait a minute. Oh, that's very nice of you, love. Mmm, very nice. Shall I give Draymond a drink when they finish, Mrs. Walker? Is that darker one there, the cheeky one with the full Manchu moustache? The Zapata moustache, you mean? The one they call Pedro? We have some silly name for him. Anyway, you must never, ever give him a drink again. Not after what he said to me. No, well, he's not here, Mrs. Walker. I think I heard he'd turn up wrestling. Mm, I'm not surprised. All right, then, dear. Bert? Yeah? What do you think? Does this suit me? Yes, it does. I remind myself of my grandmother. No, they're coming back, aren't they? Frills and all that. Yeah. It's lovely. Draymond, I brought this, Mrs. Walker. Feels like material or something. Well, it can hardly be the uniforms. Oh, not no. if you give them Fred and Betty's measurements. Less of your clever remarks, Lynch. You're no flaming twiggy yourself. Well, mine is in all the right places. Oh, yeah. It's just as well, because this is all there is. Get away. So it's hardly your double-blessed Bruce Erd or your Christian Dior special. Just three T-shirts, one for each of you. Well, then, Mingy, so-and-so's. Not even a funny caption. Why, well, I'd have thought that I'd put some catchy on it, wouldn't you? You show them, Fred. Stencil it on underneath. You two can have a belly full. Really, bitch? And I'll have Newton and Ridley's fine ales way out in front. Oh, yeah. Sorry, Mrs. Walker. Well, it's amazing what they can get into a small space these days, isn't it? Mind you, I'm not too keen on not having a back door. I'm old-fashioned in that respect. I like my back door. 
Are you desperate to move? Oh, no, no, we're not desperate, but my husband's changing his job, you see, and we wanted to be a bit nearer, with him not having a car at the moment. <laughs> He's going to work at the new supermarket. Oh, well, you'd be very handy for that. Mm, yes, yes, you would. And what did you say you were asking? 19,000. Yes, well, don't get much for 19,000 these days, do you? When I think back, you know, you could have got a mansion when I was a girl for 19,000, a mansion. Mm, well, times change, don't My they? My gum, they do, yeah. Well, that was a lovely cup of tea, thank you. Oh, well, have another. Oh, no, thank you. I've had three already. <laughs> I'll tell you what I wouldn't say no to, though. Another of them little buns. Help yourself. Oh, thanks very much. Did you make them? Yes, I did. Oh, very nice. I can see that you're a very competent wife and mother. Thank you. I mean, it can't have been easy bringing up a baby in this place. Only the one bedroom. And, I mean, they take up a lot of room, don't they? Even the littlest of them. They do, yeah. Yours have left home, have they? Oh, no. no. Well, my eldest daughter did to get married, but... She comes straight back after divorce. I've got four. Four children? Mm, two boys and two girls, spread over 14 years. Well, this place is no good for you if you've got four children. Oh, heavens no, love. I mean, this place would be filled with me two lads by themselves. No, this is it, you see. I've always fancied this estate. So I said to my husband, when one of them houses comes up for sale, I'm going to go round there, have a look, see how they're built. It'd have come with me, but he couldn't get off work. Good job he didn't, or there'd have been none of them buns left, would there? Well, I mustn't stay here gossiping, love. It's been very nice of you. Thank you very much for your hospitality. Oh, um, I don't think I'm being nosy, but uh, why are you moving exactly? Private reasons. Oh. Oh, never mind, love. My daughter went through it all, and you get over it. You'll see, love. You'll get over it. You know, people have some very funny ideas about quick weddings. Yeah, we know that, don't we? Only in our case, there wouldn't be funny ideas. Well, that's what I was thinking. Perhaps we could have a church wedding. It might just allay suspicion, like. Oh, I for a month or two. Yeah. Pity, though. Would have liked a church wedding. So would I have loved one. Oh, we can't, Eddie. Not as things are. We just have a quiet little do in a register office, eh? Yeah. I'll nip down this afternoon and do something about it. I mean, it'll be just as good. We'll be just as married. Hey, I can't wait. That's the flaming trouble neither of us can. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's up there? <laughs> Have you never seen a fella in a T-shirt before or something? Oh, is that what it is? Oh, it's a T-shirt. What does T stand for, though? That's tremendous, the looks of him. <laughs> Titanic, Adam. Oh, that <laughs> Titanic. With a bit of luck, he'll go the same way. <laughs> now, girls, you know what a sensitive flower he is. Oh, I'll tell you what, you don't look bad in yours. Yes, well, I'm lucky, aren't I? Some of us can wear anything. I mean, put me in a sack and what have you got? Hundred weight of big spuds. Oh. Thank you. Well, where's yours then, Betty Love? In my handbag where it's stopping. Oh, put it on. Go on, give us the laugh. I'll give you a thick ear. <laughs> <Get off. laughs> Oh, look at him. You'd think they'd never seen a flaming T-shirt before. Not like that, they have hey, You ought to get yourself down old Trevor next season, Fred. You make a great sight screen. <laughs> <laughs> look, Mrs. Walker, I've had enough of this. I'm, I'm, kick, I'm kicking this into touch. Fred, Fred, persevere. Now, you don't often get the opportunity to amuse the customers. <laughs> right, then, what are we having? I'll have a look. Oh, where's, where's Mickey? Who sold him? What are you having, love? Brian, don't be silly. Come on now, where is he? Oh, stop, my three and He's in safe hands. Where do you think we've left him playing in the traffic? Give us something to cool me off. I'll have a lager. Bye, yeah, you've got one on you, haven't you? She had someone round to see the house. Yeah, and that's all she wanted, in order to see it. Oh, one of them, you'll get a lot of them, love. I won't, you know. Well, you don't want to let people like that worry you, Gail. She stopped me doing me washing. I had three cups of tea. Goodness knows how many of me old maid bums. What? Oh, you're on my side now, are you? Now it affects your stomach. And then she had the nerve to ask me why we were moving. What did you tell her? Well, would you believe it? I went all naughty on her and told her for private reasons. She was that thick skin, she didn't realise I was getting at her. She thought him and me were splitting up. Don't worry, she said, you'll get over it. It happened to me, daughter. Oh, I could have throttled her. Hey, get that down here. Yeah. Oh, some women like that, love. They can't open the mouth without they put the foot in it. Yeah, there are some women like that, aren't they, Vera? Mm. 
Oh, what some power the gift to gear. To see ourselves as ever see us. Hello there, Mrs. Bishop. Oh, hello. Your humble servant, Percy Sugden, with the forces at fair. Oh, very nice. Oh, how's that suit you? Oh, lovely. Apart from one slight error, Mr. Sugden. Oh, yes. In this context, the word fair should be spelled F-A-Y-R-E, not as you have it. Hey, we're having an autumn fair, Richard. Fair. Oh, dear, bag. <laughs> oh, dear, oh, dear. Still, you know what they say. Emma's never made a mistake, never made anything. I'll go and autumn and bring them back. Well, don't go to too much trouble. For you, Mrs. Bishop, I can't go to enough. <laughs> you seem to have found yourself an admirer. Yes, I do, don't I? You want to grab him quick, Emily? I mean, I was going to have to do all decorating. Really, Vera? No, honestly, take it from me, kid. Don't last long, but when they're in a lot, they'll do out for you. <laughs> <laughs> tell you. Tell her, love. You don't land a fella unless you do something positive. Am I right? Oh, I don't quite... I mean, you've got to make a play for him. Show him you're interested. Meet him halfway. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I suppose you have to, yeah. There you are, you see? Now, that's how you landed yours, isn't it, love? Well, once I got hold of him, I didn't let go. Now, you remember that. She's let more fellas slip through her fingers than Liz Taylor's kept hold of, and that's saying something. Oh, summer. take no notice of her, Marion. Now, I want your honest opinion. She's lost touch with her fella, right? This is Victor. This is Victor. And she's dying for the chance to see him again. I am not. Yes, you are. Dying for the chance. And what have we got? An autumn fair round the corner. And Victor sat up in Saddleworth at his little potter's wheel, churning out models of the Leaning Tower of Pisa and calling them vases. I didn't know it did pottery. Victor does everything, except marry her. Now, isn't that a golden opportunity to ring him up, tell him about the fair, and ask him to bring his little works of art? I'm sure he'd be delighted. I mean, he can't have many opportunities to show his work off. Are you listening, madam? I just wish... Look, I'm not getting at you, Marion, but I'm quite capable of making up my own mind, which I'm in the process of doing at this moment. That means she'll do note. Ideal home in Coronation Street. You're going as bad as Annie Walker. <laughs> I can dream, can't I? You can, love. You can have nightmares as well. Hello, Stan. Uh, Ellie says that uh, it's three weeks since we've done your windows. Can we do them tomorrow morning? Aye, go on then. Is that right. not with you? Uh, no, it's all love somewhere. Oh, that reminds me, Hilda's coming back tomorrow. Oh. Sent me a letter. And that's you, says, uh, ask Marion to get something in for dinner. We'll be home by one o'clock, Hilda. Right. OK, see you tomorrow. Early as you like, Stan. Yeah, look, I'll wait, wait for Eddie, you see, cos uh, till he finishes the bins. Cos he does up there, I do down here. Cos the ladders, you know. Oh, I uh, see. Soon as you can, then. Right. It were never like that with George Formby. Mm. Poor Mrs. Ogden, fancy coming home to that. Still, he's company for her, and she doesn't need a licence for him. <laughs> there is, I'll see you, Trello. Trello. Aren't we speaking? No. Right, what shall we sing, then? Could I have a word with you, Mrs. Walker? Certainly, dear, what's it? Well, I'm not one for causing trouble now, am I? And you wouldn't say that I was one for making a fuss about nothing. What is it? What on earth is it? Well, well, they've been on at me and they're them two. They're saying that they won't wear their T-shirts if I don't wear mine. Well, I mean, I know the brewery sent them special and it was very, very kind of them, Mrs Walker, but, well, I couldn't. Honestly, I couldn't. Hardly you, is it, dear? Well, I mean, they're all right for the younger end, or, or bet that doesn't really care, but if I had to put one of these on... I mean, I'd never hold my head up again, Mrs Walker. Honest, I wouldn't hold my head up. Give it to me. Don't have to wear it. You certainly don't. Oh, Mrs Walker, you don't know what a load you've taken off my mind. You see, I thought with the brewery sending them special... The brewery, Elizabeth, moves in a mysterious way. Oh. They see themselves as admirals of the fleet. Uh. But as long as I am captain of this particular ship, I shall decide what my crew wears. 
And that means I don't have to wear that daft thing. That is what it means. Oh. I'm just making sure, because, you know... <sighs> it was just a whim of the brewery's day, oh. nothing more. The final say is mine, and I have spoken. And you can oh. tell the others. I will, Mrs Walker, with the greatest of pleasure. <laughs> Gentlemen, oh. to see you, Mrs Walker. Oh, yes, Mr Sexton. I've altered them, like I said, Mrs Walker, and if they meet with your approval, I'd like your permission to put one up on your premises. Quite right. Will you see to it, Bed? Yes, Mrs Walker. Thank you, Mrs Walker. That's quite all right, dear. Yes. And do you think you might close the door? I will, with the greatest of pleasure. Go on, get out. How about over there, back door? Will it be all right, though? Eh? Ah, go on. Try not to knock too many holes in it, Paul. Oh, don't make no mess of that tacky stuff. Good for you. <laughs> Been feeding you the cream, has she? In a manner of speaking, yes. And we don't have to wear these damn silly things. Who says? Mrs Walker says, and she has spoken. Hear that, Fred? Mrs Walker says we don't have to wear us T-shirts. Flaming, daughter. I've just got used to mine. Well, nobody else says. Thanks. Right, oh. lads. They're coming off. Oh. 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 Sorry, lads. Uh, Didn't you mean now, Mrs. Walker? Did you mean later? I yes. think so. In the privacy of your own flat. Hey, that'll cut your audience down a bit, then, she. Don't be too sure, Fred. I get more than Stockport County on a good night. Why <laughs> did she brilliant? Hey, uh, who's the tire house looking in that window? Well, I can't wait. We've had a young couple. Aren't they like the house? I think they want to buy it. Oh, lovely news. Oh, I'll go and make us a cup of tea, look. Hey, looks like we're going to be one big happy family again. <laughs> well, let's face it, kid. If there were no marriages, there'd be no mother-in-laws, would there? Oh, I don't fancy telling me mum, but I suppose I'll have to. She's always had such big ideas for me. <laughs> October the 31st. Day to remember. Yeah. Hey, I'll tell Elsie, and as soon as Mrs. Ogden gets back, I'll tell her and all. I mean, I don't want them hearing it from other people. Hey, who are you? In here. Have you got anything for our dinner tomorrow? Yes, Mr. Ogden, I have got something for our dinner, and I'll Good. bring it round in the morning. Uh, yes, well, uh, I was hoping perhaps you might come round tonight for about a couple of hours, you know, do some dusting. Seeing Hilda's coming back tomorrow. No, she can't. I know. Because she's... because she's got better things to do with her time, that's why not. Why well, you done it before. Well, things change, Stanley. And this is one of them. You'll have to do your own dusting. Ah, do you? I thought you were going to tell him about the baby, then. You think I'm potty getting married? Do you? Just try and get out of it. <laughs> I could murder a cup of tea. Well, we've run out of tea bags. I used the last two at lunchtime. Charming. No, you don't give a toss about me, do you? I mean, to stand here day after day watching you pining away. You're nothing short of army. You've got a ready-made excuse. All you have to do is lift that phone oh, up and I've give him a ring. I said no, Rita, and I mean no. He'll think I'm running after him. So you are running after oh. him. I'm going to get the tea. Well, have a think about it, aren't we? I'm only going next door. Well, have a little think. Cabin. Hello. We were just talking about you. How are you? Oh, can't complain. She's just this minute nipped out. No, no, she'll be back any second. She's only gone next door. Oh, same old mad social world. Traffic lights keep changing. How are things in Saddleworth? Still dancing around Maple. Only jogging. Hang on. I hear the patter of tiny feet. It's Victor for you. Oh, maybe it's Victor for you. You've played that game once too often, Rita, ringing him up the minute my back's turned. As I live and breathe, he rang here. Oh. I'm telling you, God's but honest. You stop pretending. I'm not pretending. He rang here. I'm telling you. Hello, Victor. What made you ring up? Oh. Uh, yes, I'm fine. Fine, thank you. Um, oh, nothing really. Well, but we have got an autumn fair next week, and I just wondered if, if you'd like to bring some of your pottery down for one of the stores. Oh, you would? Oh, good. Yeah, at the time, just let me know when you come in. Right. Bye. I'm sorry. I should think you are. Well, you 
must admit, you haven't got a very good record. Oh, I see. One of those, are we? Good job you're not a judge, isn't it? Sending people to prison because they've been there before. There's such a thing as being proved guilty until you're innocent. It's innocent before you prove guilty. There you are, you see. You know it and you're still acting like little little. Look, I've said I'm sorry. I don't know. I take some stick from you. It's a good job I've got a forgiving nature. Well, is he coming down? But you grab him, kid. Pots and all. I'll make the tea. Along comes the old man and pecks it in the... Uh... What lines with nappies? I don't know, but it sounds disgusting. Any road, they're not nappies. Soon will be. Hey, shh. Well, who's listening? You never know around here, do you? Only a big, soft kid. You sure you're going to be able to cope with two of us? I'll give it a try. I can always have me noticing and join hot gossip. Hey, what did Elsie say when you told her? I bet she was dead shuffed. Well, I've not had a chance to tell you. I was just going to now. Do you want me to come with you? No, that's all right. I mean, I know she's going to be thrilled, but she's going to be a bit upset and all. What, with losing a lodger, you mean? Well, I like to think I'm a bit more than just a lodger. Yeah. Same as me with Hilda. I'm going to tell her at dinner time. Yeah. Can't wait to see her face. What are you going to say? I'm just going to tell her we're getting wet, aren't I? Yeah, well, make sure that's just all you say. Look, I know we're keeping the news of Eddie Junior a secret for a bit. I'm not daft. Oh, no, you're not, love. Oh, it's just hope they don't twig. That nah, doesn't much matter if they do, does it? Well, it does to me. Well, you're not ashamed, are you? Of course I'm not ashamed. It's just that, well, women like to do things in a certain way, I do. We're different to you. I hope you are. Otherwise, the web is off. <laughs> <laughs> shoo, shoo, shoo. Oh, you're off then. You overslept. I know I overslept. Why didn't you call me? I did. You took no notice. Oh, it's them flaming sleeping pills he gives me. Talk about knockout drops. Oh, Elsie, you shouldn't take pills. I don't, as a rule, but you wait till you get to my age. <laughs> Tossing and turning all night long. Now, what makes you think that uh, age has got anything to do with sleepless nights? Because, as a matter of fact, I've had one or two myself lately. Have you, love? I'm sorry. There's nothing wrong, is there? Hello. Not wrong. Suddenly, I've got rather a lot on my mind. Elsie, I would. Hey, either we can go over at Roger's sweatshop together or we can have a day out in London together. It's your choice. You mean uh, going down on the train with those feet up, then uh, shopping in the West End, and then supper at one of them posh restaurants that all the stars go to, and uh, gin and tonics all the way home? Yeah, that right. Um, <laughs> no contest, it's the sweatshop. Um, <sighs> come on. Let's be. Oh, you're going to tell me something, weren't you, love? Ah, uh, it'll keep well dinner time. You'll be in. I'll see the time, Chuck. Hey, well, we've still got a minute, so we, you know, I mean, we don't have to dash her after we. Oh, but I do. Throw I'll see you then. Yeah. I did think about a rich fruit cake. Well, now, this'll do for refreshments, so I'll put it over here. Nearest spot for Philip Turner. Well, I did rather decide it against the refreshment stall as such, Mr. Sugden. But then I thought, no, I thought, no, I'm a rang Pavlo that looks more spectacular. Take a tip from an ex catering man. One thing most folks will expect is a nice hot cup of char. Anyway, she keeps going on about cakes. Are we for the cake stall, not to consume on the premises? The only thing is, I'd be worried that it might get squashed. And I could get a few bottles of orange juice, you know, wholesale from Cash and Carry, make a nice few bob on that. Do you think it will get squashed, Emily? What? Am I round? Yes. Oh. I think, apart from anything else, it's a question of finding helpers to man the extra stalls, or, or woman them, as the case may be. Do you a layer cake's always nice, or perhaps some small assorted fancies would sell better. Oh, well, I can get you a few packets of them. Oh, I'm talking about well. homemade. Hey, Thank you. come in handy though for a refreshment stall. Few jam tarts, almond slices, just a job. I thought you said you weren't oh, going to... Oh, wasn't. Will you give us hand with this, Mr Roberts? Well, you'll have to indent for some crockery if you do, you know. You well, have plastic it... throwaway cups. Oh, no, they make a lot of rubbish. Well, uh, it's my job to clean them up, and I don't mind. Not for Mrs Bishop, I don't. Oh, a chocolate devil's food cake. Now, I got a recipe out of a magazine I found at the dentist. I've been dying to try that. Oh, yeah, and Mrs Petworth says she's got some jumble for your stall as well. Only can somebody go around to collect it because she's hurt her back. Oh. Uh, it's 16 Nelson Street, I oh, think. Oh, 16 Nelson Street. Emily, I asked you what you think. Make whatever you want, Mavis. A devil's food cake, then? Yes. But do you think that might be a bit on the rich side? Right. He's just phoned and he's bringing his pots down. So oh. if you want to go and squirt some scent down your bra, I'll give these a hand. Young Linda's helping out for half an hour at shop. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, yes, you do. Sir Victor is sallying forth from Saddleworth, his lady for to woo. I'm not his lady, and he's not coming to woo me. 
is going to bring his contribution to the fair. You said so yourself. You don't believe everything I say, do you? I don't. Well? Well, I, I was just thinking about going home, getting a wash. Of course you were. Dirty work pinning doilies up. Right, Emily. You can have the use of my body for a whole 20 minutes. Now, what can I do to help? Rita, you already have. I never said it was big news. Oh, come off it. You're sitting there bubbling away like a pan of hot pot. <laughs> Are you going to tell me or do I have to guess? <sighs> Eddie and me are getting married. Oh, I know that. But this month, Elsie, so I'll put the 31st of October in your diary. Is this definite? Definite? Barring flood, fire and acts of God. Oh, I am glad, <laughs> kid. I was wondering when you were going to do the deed. I thought I'd made you too comfortable here, you know, and you couldn't bear to leave me. I can't. I'm looking forward to getting married, Elsie, but there are things I am going to miss. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know. Like me screaming at you for losing, using all the hot water and uh, coming home to a sink full of greasy pots. <laughs> Where will you live? Well, we'll move into a flat first off and afterwards, hopefully, our own house. Well, good luck to you, kid. I tell you what, turn the oven down low and we'll slip over to the rovers and celebrate. Oh, no, listen, we're not making it public until Eddie's had a chance to tell Mrs Ogden. Well, she's been there, Trevor's. And you know Mrs. Ogden. <laughs> She'd be dead upset if she was the last to know. <laughs> the day that Hilda Ogden is the last to know anything, I'll do a double somersault over the town hall. All right, <laughs> let's celebrate tonight then, shall we? You're on. <laughs> um, why did you leave it till now to make the decision? No special reason. Like I said, we thought it was time we got round to it. But uh, this month? But we've nothing to wait for, Elsie, have we? I mean, some people think we've waited long enough. You uh, do realise I shall have to buy a new frock for the occasion, don't you? And new shoes. And a new hat. It's a very big responsibility being a guest, you know. I wouldn't like to have to have all that worry. I'm only the bride. Yeah. <laughs> Ace down. I thought you were expecting your old about this dinner. I am. So why it back there then, lay a red carpet down? Welcome home, my love. I'd miss you so much, my love. <laughs> well, what's the rush? Every time she goes away, she's complaining when she gets back this place when she gets back here. Never. Now, what can Hilda find to complain in you, then? That's what I told her. <laughs> I think you look as if you could do with a double scotch at least. I am tempted, Betty. I am sorely tempted. Oh. But I think I'd better settle for a bit of lemon. Mm. It's hard work, isn't it? Organising these charity oh. dues. I know I've done a bit of that myself, you know. Hey, we don't want to play muggins, Cop. Get some of that lot to help. Give you a bit of help. Oh, I've got help. It's the helpers that are the problem. I've just left Alf and Mr Sugden practically coming to blows over the best place for the bingo stall. Hey, well, I thought I were in that. You are. If they manage to agree where it's to go before oh. next Saturday. Now, what you need, ladies, is uh, a little bit of leadership. Somebody in authority, somebody who can command respect, give orders, make decisions. I'm not too busy this afternoon. Now, as it happens, I'm not too busy this afternoon, Emily, so I'll pop over and give you a hand, OK? Oh, well, it's very nice of you, but I'm sure you've got quite enough to do here. Oh, Emily, I've sorted <coughs> out some stuff for you. Thanks. Oh, is this that jumbo stall? Oh, uh, let's have a shuffle. Oh, oh, what happened? It's a bric-a-brac, oh. Mrs Duckworth, and you will get your chance to purchase it with the rest of the general public on Saturday. Yeah, but I'm committed, aren't I? What's the point of being committed if you can't, you know, have perks or telecom? Oh, well, I do hey, think hey, that you hey, should... Keep your thieving hands off, Duckworth. Just because you're in charge of a few bingo balls doesn't give you the right to go grabbing everything. All right, can you spare me, Mrs. Walker? I'm just going across the road to help Emily out. Well, if Emily really needs you... Well, you do, don't you, Emily? Come along, cavalry to the rescue. <laughs> Let's have you. <laughs> nice one, Fred. You're leaving us over here to do all the hard work and you're over there sitting on your big fat bum giving orders. It's all for a good cause, Betty. Somebody has to do it. Emily. Oh, hello, Eddie. How was your Trevenant? Well, I think I've managed to make the peace a bit. Him and his dad will never really get on, though. Do you know, I sometimes wish our Archie'd never left me that flipping money. And nothing to do with the money, really. I mean, they never got on before, did they? No, I suppose you're right. Where is he, any road? No, never mind. Daft question. I'll put the kettle on. Hey, no. You sit down. You've done enough travelling. You're a good lad, Daddy. Very thoughtful. Not enough thoughtfulness in this world. Oh, well. What's been going on in my absence, then? 
Well, not a lot, really. Mind you, there is uh, one item in news that may or may not interest you. Oh, yeah. How are you fixed for going to a wedding on October the 31st? Who's wedding? Mine. Well, mine and Marion. I thought I'd invite her. Only you feel a bit of a twitch standing in front of the register on your own, don't you? Oh, Edsy. Oh, Edsy, sure. <laughs> <laughs> And Mr. Pendlebury arrived yet. He was bringing some pottery that he's made. I've not seen it. I'm just oh. going over to get some emulsions, as a matter of fact. I know I've got some. Emulsions? Yeah. Flipping kids have scored rude things in the lavatory. You don't want old ladies having heart attacks, oh. do you? I must paint that flaming bog at least once a month, if not more. Mr. Sugden, what on earth are you doing? It took me all morning putting that up. It stinks. I beg your pardon. Vinegar. Somebody must have spilled some on the last time it was used. Hmm. I mean, I'm surprised you couldn't smell pong yourself. Mind you, with all that scent you were in. Well, it must be the heating that's brought it out, then, because it was perfectly all right yesterday. Oh. Hello, Mavis. Hello, Victor. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Is that your pottery? Oh. A poor thing. Oh. Got mine on. Oh, it, it's lovely. <laughs> what is it exactly? I mean, I can see... It, it's it... a crocus pot. You plant crocuses oh. in the holes. I copied it from one I saw in a shop. Very nice. Don't you think perhaps the holes are a bit too small? I mean, do you think you would actually get a crocus bulb in there? They're not big. No, but neither are the holes. <laughs> well, seeds then. Crocus seeds. I don't think crocus grow from seeds. I've done mugs as well. Oh, no! Are you going to stand there all day or are you going to get a bowl of hot water and some carbolic? Just scrub that down. Somebody's got to do it. And it is your stall. Oh. Unless you don't mind your Victoria sponges ponging up pittled onions. Ah, right, here we are. And you had a tint. That's pink. Yeah. I'm not painting no flaming loo pink. Emily, <laughs> Mr Sutton says that I've got to scrub this stall down. Now, I think that should be his job. What's oh. wrong with pink? I mean, I could understand if it was a gents. What's he got against pink? It's perfectly good paint, is that? Oh, Look at mess he's made on that floor. And I've just... It took me two hours to sweep it up. Get him to pack his junk somewhere else. It is not junk, it is oh, handcrafted yes, pottery. Yeah, yeah, Each yeah, piece yeah, individually yeah, signed. Yeah, yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah. Emily, yeah. Emily, yeah. leave this to me. Well, go on. Don't just sit there gobstruck. Well, what do you want me to do? Oh, well, people usually say congratulations when they hear somebody's getting married. Congratulations, mate. Oh, very original. I don't know what you said. Stan, it's Eddie. Already, not a flipping stranger. He's practically one of the family. More like a son than our real son. And him and Marion's getting married, and, well, I think it's lovely. Oh, I'm very pleased. I, I hope you'll be very happy. I mean, I've got used to things being the way they are, you know. I, I thought you had, too. You mean they thought they were going to go on like that for the rest of their lives? Living in separate houses? Separate houses, yeah. If more people had separate houses, there'd be less divorces, you see. That remark is in very bad taste. Still, I know Eddie won't take offence. He knows every remark you make in bad taste. It's all right. I know he's only kidding. You know, it's living with you two that's made me want to take the plunge. Is that it? Yeah. I mean, you see, I know you love each other deep down, you know. Oh. Well, yeah, of course we do, don't we, Chuck? Yes, yeah, not, not a bad old boot, you know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it was his silver tongue that won you over in the first place, Hilda. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I think it'll be smashing, though. Hey, but why October? Now, you've waited all this time. Why couldn't you wait a few more weeks and make it a Christmas wedding? Yeah, well, we did think about that, but, um, Well, it's uh, Marion's busy time in the shop, you know. Oh, yeah, I suppose so. Oh, still, it would have been nice, though. You could have had them singing carols in church. Oh, it's not a church wedding. No. No, registry office. Oh. Oh, but I thought, well, with neither of you being married before, well, I haven't exactly discussed it with Marion, like, but, well, I thought she'd be the sort of girl who'd have wanted a church wedding. What for? Cost a bomb. Money doesn't come into it. It's what every girl dreams of. I did. Well, you didn't have a church wedding. I know. Still, 
I expect it'll be very nice just the same. Just a, a quiet, select little do I? Just uh, best friends and immediate family. Ah, family. Now, that's something you've missed out on, Eddie. But never mind. You're going to have your very own family now. Yeah, that's right, Hilda. I am. We, uh, just thought we'd like to have another look round before we finally decide, didn't we, David? Yeah, of course, no problem. This room's very bright. Yes, it gets the sun all day. The other one's got a bigger living room, though, don't you think, love? Yeah, but it's long and thin. It's got that funny angle near the door. This is very square. Compact. It's very easy to clean. Well, I think it's a cracking little house. Yes, yeah, so do I, but... And the fuel bills are very low. It's been very well uh, insulated. What exactly is the availability? Availability? I mean, assuming we said we'd have it, how soon could we get possession? Oh, immediately. You could move in as soon as the contract's been signed. Well, the other people said not till after Christmas. Their new place won't be ready till then. Oh, it's not that long. Only a couple of months. Three at the most. We're just dead keen to get into our own place as soon as we can, like. Are you in Dakes? In-laws. Not that they've not been very good to us, Sue's mum and dad. Oh, they have, love. I know, I'm saying. But it's not the same. Not like being on your own. No, it's not. We've uh, not been on our own yet. We only got married six months ago and we moved straight in with me mum and dad. But we get on very well. Just think, though, Sue. Evenings when I come home from work. Long lying Sunday mornings. Nobody else. Just the two of us. But me mum and dad can come and visit us, though. Be our first guests at our first dinner party. Dinner party, eh? I'm not much of a cook. Leastways, not yet. I mean, my mum's always done it. But I am going to night school, aren't I, Davy? Oh, it must be lovely cooking a meal for your husband in your very own kitchen with nobody else telling you what to do. Hello, Victor. Hello. How nice to see you round these parts again. We've missed you, haven't we, Mavis? Gone, but not forgotten. Do you know there's never a day goes by without your name isn't mentioned in that little old world toffee shop we both call home? Rita. Still, now you're here, what you having? Well, that's very civil of you, Rita. I'll have a pint of bitter, please. Pint of bitter, please? Mavis. Oh, I'll have a sherry, then. A large sherry. Ooh. Aye, my, you do have an effect on her, you know. It's got nothing to do with Victor. I mean, it was bad enough when Percy Sugden was giving the orders round there, but when Fred G starts throwing his weight about... Oh, well, I thought Emily Bishop was supposed to be at Queen Bee over there, didn't Emily? You? I asked her one simple question. I didn't know she knew such language. Well, what question was that, love? Sultana Sponge or Battenberg? Oh! <laughs> yes, well, uh, Sultana Sponge or Battenberg. I mean, that's real fighting talk, maybe. <laughs> uh, I love it. Oh, no. Come and tell me all about Saddleworth. Are you enjoying your life there? Ecstatically, Mavis. Ecstatically. It's everything I hope for and more. And you don't miss being around here? Not a bit, not a tittle, not a jot. I tell you, Mavis, moving there was the best decision I ever made. Well, I'm very glad for you, Victor. Very glad indeed. It is. Have you told them? Yeah. Have you told them? Yeah, yeah. Oh, have you made it public then? Oh, what? Do you mind being kissed by an old lady then? Well, if it was an old lady, I wouldn't mind, but she's it's you. Yeah. Oh, hey, what's it, it, you two? <laughs> what's all here? What's all this about then? Oh, haven't they told you yet, Hilda? Well, yeah, they've told me. I was under the impression I was the first to know. Uh, well, you were, yeah. Uh, you, you both were. It was like, um, simultaneous, you know. That's right. Well, I was telling Elsie, Eddie was telling you. I mean, we do look on your both as family. Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. How about that, then, eh, Elsie? <laughs> Looks as though we're practically going to be related. <laughs> hey, well, what's all this, then? Come on. Uh, shall I tell them, or will you? You do it. Go on. Um, me and Eddie have fixed our wedding date. And we're getting married on October the 31st. Oh, that's so nice. I'm delighted to hear it. And, of course, Mrs Walker will be coming to see you about the arrangements, you know. The arrangements? Well, we'll be having the reception here. We wouldn't dream of having it anywhere else. I see. And will your uh, friends from Liverpool be attending the nuptials? Oh, yeah. I think they are in a chair. <laughs> I see. <laughs> Take the notice of it, Mrs Walker. It's having you on. It's going to be a very quiet little do. I hope so, dear. I very much hope so. 
Hey, hey, do you hear that? Eddie and Marion are getting married October 31st. <laughs> See, Victor, you come down here and you're caught for all the excitement. Still, I suppose you do have weddings in Saddlemouth, don't you? Must be lovely, that. Country wedding. Don't you think, maybe? Right, that's done. Think. What does it matter if it's sky blue, purple, yellow dots as long as it's done and it costs nothing? Flipping gratitude. Right, now, oh. let's see how you shoot. Yes. A bit scorched, isn't it? I wouldn't have done it that way. Well, we have done it that way, Mr Tatlock. But you haven't used space to the best advantage. <sighs> now then, would you like my advice? There's no need for that. If you want to know to draw up a battle plan, <laughs> Ask an old soldier. Well, I'm an old soldier. Aye, a very old one. I've done my stint, you know. I know what's what. Flipping catering co. If you want to know where to get your egg butties, ask him. But, now, now, where are you moving that? Away from Flaming Wall, that's where. Somebody's got to have room to stand behind it. There's plenty of room. There's tons of room where it was. There is for a very thin skeleton. Just put it back. Don't you give me orders. You're not in charge here, big mouth. And neither are you, Sunshine. You're only the flipping caretaker, don't forget. Uh, gentlemen, gentlemen, please. I, I, I think perhaps it's time we called it a day. We, we've done quite enough. Right, well, I'm not stopping here to be insulted. Oh, I think I'll get back to the Rovers as well. Pity you ever left it. <laughs> Try to do you a bit for charity, and this is all the thanks you get. Oh, why does everybody have to make such a fuss? Never you mind, Mrs Bishop. You come back to my place and put your feet up for ten minutes. I'll make you a nice hot cup of tea. What you want is somebody to take charge of you for a change. Tea will be a bit late, Ivy. I've been busy selling the house. You sold it then? Definite? Yeah, definite. A young couple. First time buyer, so when that gets stuck in a chain. All over about shouting. They want to move in as soon as we can move out. Oh. So you better get your spare bed out, haven't you? That's if you still prefer to get landed with three lodgers. Unless your grand's changed their mind, eh, Wrecker? I wouldn't blame her on your present form. Don't talk daft. We're going to get on fine. We're all going to get on just fine, love. Well, it all went off very well, I thought. Aye. I mean, even Stan bought a round of drinks. No, I meant nobody said anything funny. Funny? Well, no cracks about it being a rush job. Nobody seemed a bit suspicious. Well, why should they be? Anyway, in this day and age, nobody cares. Oh, my mum would. <sighs> if she knew the truth, she'd go stark raving mad. Well, don't tell her. Just tell her we're getting married and leave it at that. Yeah, but she wants to know why I'm not having a white wedding. I mean, she knows I've always set my heart on one. Well, tell her you've changed your mind. Oh, it's not going to be easy. <laughs> I mean, I know to everybody else I'm a 33-year-old woman, but to my mother, I'm still a little girl. I mean, some mothers are like that with daughters. <sighs> if I have a daughter, I won't be. <sighs> I'll go around and see her on my next day off. Do you want me to come with you? You're a love, Eddie. But no, I'd best do this one on my own. Morning. <laughs> You're not coming home with the milk, are you? Oh, chance would be a fine thing. <laughs> no, I'm just going to help Emily get things started at the centre. Oh, <laughs> hey, bet you got your cake in there, haven't you? Yes, I have. Mm. Mine's turned out lovely, really lovely. Well, I'm very pleased with mine, actually. Yeah, well, we'll soon see who's the confectioner around here, won't we? Oh, it's not a competition, Mrs. Ogden. <laughs> That's what you think. <laughs> Whiter than white, this tablecloth of yours, you know. Hmm? It says a lot about a woman, does it, tablecloth? Really? If she keeps her tablecloth nice and smart, you can bet your life she's a smart woman herself. Well, look at you. You're an incorrigible flirt, aren't you, Mr. Sugden? Ah, they'll only do it if they're good-looking. No point in wasting brill cream on the bald head. <gasps> Mr. Sugden. Good morning. Oh, at least we've got a nice day for you. Yes, good morning, Mavis. <laughs> My happy business. Yes. Oh, what would you expect from a winning team like uh, me and Emily? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, where would you like me to put my cakes? And you stuff? can be centre stage if you like, seeing you first here. There, Thank right you. in the middle. <laughs> Lovely. Now. There. Oh. oh, that looks delicious, Mavis. But uh, I thought you were going to make something more. Um, more what? Well, uh, elaborate. <gasps> Emily, that is a Madeira cake, one of the classic cakes. Looks like it had a job getting out of baking tin to me. Man, 
I mean, it's one thing speaking your mind, but he makes a life's work of it. Well, he's very good with the heavy jobs. Mm, and we all know why, don't we? Now, Mavis. Oh, I'm sorry. Actually, that cake is not what it seems. Oh, no. I remember when my mother used to make things for sales of work at home in Grange. She always used to put a secret ingredient in the cake. And everybody had to guess what it was at so much a time, you know. And the one that guessed right won the cake. Absolutely brilliant, baby. Yes, I thought so. And here I've got a large jar of dried peas for people to guess how many there are in it. Yes, I can see you making a fortune for the hospital before the day's oh. out, maybe. Well, no, I says it shouldn't. I am rather good at these affairs, like my mother was, you know. Uh, is there any news of Victor yet? No, but don't worry. He'll be here with his pots. Pottery, Emily. Pottery. Some bacon in a pan if you want it. No, thanks. What's up with you? Are you off your grub? You look terrible. Oh, thanks. Oh, I'm sorry, Elsie. I'm just a bit worried what my mum's going to say when I tell her I'm getting married. Oh, come on. She's not likely to have hysterics, is she? No, of course not. But I don't think she's been expecting it. Oh, come on. She'll be as happy as Larry, like I am. Yeah. I'll feel better when I've had a cup of tea. I uh, hope you don't mind us coming so early, but we wanted to go shopping this afternoon, didn't we, David? Yeah. Well, there's so much you need, isn't there, when you're moving into your first house? It's surprising. And you'll find you'll always be needing things, too. Hey, don't listen to him. He's just an old married man. How long did you say you two would be married? Six months. Well, we were only going out together for three months, weren't we, David? Three months and a week. It's not very long, is it? How long were you and me going out for before we got married? Um, a year, wasn't it? More like two. But we just knew we were right. So there were no point in waiting, was there, David? Not really. Still, not many people feel the need to get married these days, do they? All my parents would have had kids if we'd have gone to live together. And mine wouldn't have coughed up the deposit for the house, either. Oh, so it paid you to get married, then? Yeah, but we still wanted to. And we've not regretted it so far, have we, David? No. <laughs> So, come in and come upstairs and take some measurements, then? Yeah, of course you can, mate. We're having everything coordinated in the bedroom. You know, carpets, curtains, duvets. Are you? Have you got the tape measure, Sue? No, I thought you'd got it. You said you were bringing it. I never said that. You did, last night. Well, I thought you said you were bringing it. Uh, it's all right. We've got one you can have. Oh. Perhaps I did and I forgot. I've got a terrible memory. Well, you've got a lot to think about, haven't you? Yeah. There you are, mate. Thanks. Come on. You remember to bring a biro and a piece of paper, didn't you? No, but I can use my diary, and it's got a pencil, clever clogs. <laughs> Miss Sweet. Ah, oh, they're all right. Right, I'm off. Yeah, I'll see you. Hey, book up. It's not forever, you know, living with Mum. No, I know. I just keep getting this feeling it might be. Oh. Hey, it's gone very quiet upstairs in the bedroom, hasn't it? They're not like that. Their love is very pure and very beautiful. Get away. Get on with you, you old cynic. <laughs> Hello, Mrs Walker. Fred. How do? I see you've got some contributions already. Yes, it's building up nicely. Who's given that one? Me, that's mine. <laughs> well, dear, I'll show you my little creation. It's a rather regal chocolate cake with its small attendants. Well, that's beautiful, Mrs. Walker. Very professional. <laughs> oh, I look on myself as a gifted amateur. Uh, what sort of prices are you thinking about? Uh, well, them? I was thinking about a pound for the larger cake. A pound? Mm. Oh, I think you'll get far more than that for mine. <laughs> I would say 150 at least. All right, Mrs. Walker. <laughs> and I've brought some, I was going to say, old clothes. But they're really such good quality that they look quite brand new. <laughs> Is it, uh, is it all right for me to go now, Mrs. Walker? I think so, Fred, for the moment. She hasn't done a stroke here, you know, for two days. All she'd done is make flaming cakes. Eh? The first one was duff, the peasants are eating that. Well, I mean, she's a perfectionist, is Mrs. Walker, in everything she does. Perfectionist? You know what perfectionists are. They get other mugs to do the dirty work. What you got there, Hilda? Lump of concrete? Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> 
Well, here I am at last. Better late than never. <laughs> it's a fruit cake. Turned out very well, don't you think? Yes, it looks very appetising, Mrs Ogden. <coughs> you managed to get it over there without dropping it. I like to drop it on a flaming head. I'm going to have to make a stand, Betty. Oh, where about? Well, she treats me like a little kid, like a little page boy. It's undignified. I've heard there's a job going at coal bagging down at the side end. No, oh, funny. Listen, you've got a very soft job, Fred, and you know it. Well, I'll tell you what, she's not getting me over there with old fuddy-duddies and old maids, that's for well, sure. I thought she'd put your name down to run the stall. You what? I'm only joking, Fred. Hitler had a word for it, didn't he? Great fun of it, this year, aren't you? And a chill of the young, and Genghis Khan. Well, you know what he did, didn't you? When a German fella wanted to meet a German woman, the only time he could do it was when they were feeling fruity. Hey, that's running this afternoon. What's running this afternoon? Apple tart. Apple tart? He never mentioned apple tart, did you, Fred? No. No, he said fruity, though, you know. And what's an apple? Yeah, fruit, isn't it? Do you know, Stanley, you could convince yourself a clog iron was a pearl necklace if you thought you could win money on it. Ah, uh, especially when I'm skint on a Saturday. Hey, that's another thing that's going to happen to you and all your ex when you get married, coughing up on a Saturday dinner. It won't bother me. I know you can't understand it, neither of you can, but it's the truth. Hey, clock this. Thought you were off women. I'd have to be dead to be off that. The uh, community centre just across the road, near the factory, right at the end, love it. Thank you very much. Um, don't I know you from somewhere? You've probably seen your photo in the paper. I'm this year's Miss Weatherfield. Oh, what are you doing at the autumn fair? Well, my mother's a nurse at the infirmary, yeah. you see. She's a friend of Mrs Bishop's. So I said I'd try and make some money for them by selling kisses. Kisses? That's right. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> draft. Close your mouth, Fred. You're causing a draft. Hi. Off out. Yeah. Well? Piece of cake. Well, it wasn't bad. My mum was surprised, but she was pleased enough after she got over the first shot. Well, why shouldn't she be pleased she likes Eddie, did not she? She'd preferred I'd been marrying a chartered accountant. Mm. <laughs> but yeah, apart from that, she likes him. Yeah. I mean, who could not like Eddie? Oh, well, nobody in their right mind. So you've not to worry about, have you? No. Unless, of course, she were worrying about something else. What do you mean? What else should I be worried about? Well, I might be wrong, but I don't think I am. You're off your grub, you've stopped smoking, you come down in the morning looking like death warmed up. And to say the least, and to be kind, you are preoccupied. I am getting married, Elsie. That is not what I'm talking about, and you know it. Are you pregnant? Yes, I am. Well, well, well. I thought my little eyes couldn't be deceiving me. No, I knew. I'm only surprised you didn't find out sooner. Well, congratulations, if that's in order. Elsie, we're off of the moon, the two of us. Why, why keep it so quiet? Well, only until after the wedding, then I don't care who knows. Very wise, very wise indeed. You don't want to give folks round here any distractions. I think we've got enough on our minds with the wedding, oh, haven't we? Exactly. Though I feel I ought to warn you, I'm not the only pair of eagle eyes around here. Well, I'll just have to put on more makeup in the morning and smile a lot. I'm very happy for you, kid. I really am. Thanks, Elsie. Are you ready for the off? Yes, yes. So are you. Oh, yeah. Anybody that doesn't buy a tin of soup off me at double the price, I'll put it about they don't like dogs. I think I'm going to do rather well. What's this about your cake having a secret ingredient? It's rather clever, don't you think? Not cannabis, is it? Great. <laughs> Wonder what's happened to Victor. Oh, he'll still be bending over his potter's wheel, churning out another couple of dozen butter dishes. <laughs> I wonder if I could just have your uh, attention, ladies and gentlemen. I, I should just like to introduce the deputy mayoress, Mrs. Winters, who's kindly consented to open our autumn fair. Well, having said that, I, I don't really think she does need any introduction from me. Mrs. Winters. <laughs> Is that the best that Emily could do, a deputy mayoress? Well, she's done a lot for this town, as Rhoda Winters. Ain't it her husband that's taken over that new pub in Preeting that Newton and Ridley's have built? Yeah, they have. Mm. Mm, looks as gaudy sort of place to me. <laughs> oh, well, I won't keep you long, cos I know the longer I stand here spouting, the less time there'll be for you to spend all your money. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I would just like to say, what a grand person Emily Bishop is. I'll second that. This was her own idea entirely. 
and there couldn't be a better cause than the infirmary. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. without more ado, ladies, get your purses out, and gentlemen, get your hands in your pockets, and, oh, well, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> you have landed back. You know, I was in the smoke-filled pub, and I suddenly got the sniff of new mown hay, and I thought, hello, my missus-to-be is back from visiting her mother. You daft beggar. How'd it go? No bother. I left her planning what she was going to wear. Hey, I'd have told you she'd be tickled pink, especially when you told her you'd carried me off at last. Oh, she wouldn't believe me at first, Daddy. Oh, I bet. She said, a wallflower like you trapping him. Wealthy, handsome man about town, that he is. Hmm, tis very remarkable. You're asking for a punch in the nose, mate. <laughs> no snags at all, then? Well, just one, really. Oh? She wasn't keen on a register office wedding. You see, she would like to see me standing in a church in a shaft of sunlight looking all demure and innocent in white. You know, for a moment I thought you'd... Well, I thought she'd rumbled your condition. But somebody else has. Elsie. How? Oh, you didn't tell her. Oh, come on, love. She's not a fool. She recognised the telltale little signs. What telltale signs? <laughs> not there. It's Nelsie won't blab, but as she said, there are other people that might put two and two together. Oh, I hope they don't, Eddie. Not yet, anyway. Marion. Yeah? Look, I know this might sound daft in view of what you were saying about blabbing, but, uh, I'd like to tell Hilda. Mrs Ogden? I know. She's a walking tom tom. But I'd like her to know from me, before she finds out by accident from someone else. I mean, she's very sensitive about these things, and it could upset her. And she has been very good to me. Of course you can tell her. It's a secret she'll keep. I'll put money on it. Talk about being sensitive. You're just a great big blamange, you, aren't you? Uh, you'll uh, know Mrs yes. Walker, of course. Oh, well, we haven't met, but we've both got strong right arms from pulling pints, haven't we, Mrs Walker? <laughs> and then these are other neighbours, uh, Mrs Ogden and uh, Mrs Tilsley. Oh, pleased to meet you. Oh, well, I'm, I'm sorry, Emily, love, but I've got another three engagements this afternoon, so I'm going to have to fly. Yes, well, I do understand. Uh, if I could just introduce uh, Mrs Fairclough uh -huh. and uh, Miss Riley. Uh -huh. Oh, what lovely cakes. Oh, I'm going to have to buy myself one of these. That's all right if I do. Yes, please do. Oh, I'm spoke for choice, aren't I? No, I'm not. I'll have that one. That looks nice and wholesome to me. Just like I like a cake to be. Thank you, Will. You always look a bit sickly to me. Hey, she's brought my cake. I've had that then. Deputy Vanessa has brought my cake. Oh, good for you, Hilda. She's the lady. Deputy I think you've won on points there, Hilda. You know what, though? What? Keep it under your hat. But I made it with one of them cake mixes from the corner shop. Oh! Two very saucy books amongst this lot, if you're interested, Mrs. Walker. I'm not. Hmm. Well, uh, how about this hat, then? Just the job if you ever go to see the good old days. That was my hat, Mr. Sutton. Hmm? So it was. <laughs> Could you give me, please, three tins of anything so that I can discharge my duty and go? Well, how about a tin of ham, a tin of sardines and a tin of soup? Anything. They are, Mrs. Walker. Thank you very much indeed. Where have you been? I've almost given you up, Victor. I just didn't notice the time passing, Mavis. Well, you don't when you're throwing a jug. Is that your pottery? Some of the best work I've done. Mm. Look at that. Look at the form, look at the line. It's perfect. Well, it's very nice. Nice? I wish you wouldn't use these insipid words, maybe. I've mentioned it before. I mean, it's much more than nice. It's strong, yet at the same time, frail. Like a woman, really. I'm sorry, Vic. Anyway, uh, where can I put them? Uh, well, you can put them on here when I've got a bit more room. Oh, all right. Is there anywhere I can get a cup of tea? I haven't had a thing since breakfast, and that was at six this morning. Oh, you put the thing. Yes, over on that corner there, that table. Oh, oh good. Uh, all right, if I leave one here. Oh, Victor. Oh, you can have a go. You can for tensions. All right, you know, all your tensions. No, thanks. I'm too much in control to have tensions. Oh. <laughs> Roll up, there's lots of nice prizes still left. Hey, and there's no rubbish either. Oh, hey, you see that box of chocolates there? Worth two quid. I should know, cos I give them a yell. Oh, oh, Fred! Just the man I wanted to say, kid. Uh, how many goals did you want? A quid's worth. 
Fred! Oh, here you are. A couple of quid, look. See what you can do for me, eh? Hey, hello. Uh, now then, darling. <laughs> How much do you charge? Just what it says, 10p. All right, well, uh, what do I get for a quid? Why don't you see? <laughs> Thank you very much, sir. Was that it? Hey, sorry, Fred, you've won no kid. Hey, it's not your idea, is it, Cock? <laughs> no, the mystery ingredient could be anything, Mr Tatlock. I know there's a thousand ingredients. You want 40 yes, one? Well, get him under false pretenses. Well, if you want to guess, you can have it for free. There, I can't say further than that. It doesn't make any difference. Still daft. And you're silly enough, I reckon, to put season onions in the cake. Oh, that's it, Mr. Tatlock. Oh, yeah. Well, that's it, the mystery ingredient. It's sage. It's yours, you've won the cake. You'll see, I'm a bit balmy as well, don't you? I would be if I took a cake with season onions. Eh? But there's only a pinch in it, Mr. Tatlock. You wouldn't be able to taste it. Trouble? Oh, it's just Mr. Tatlock being Mr. Tatlock. It's going very well, though, isn't it? Yes, I mean, as you can see, I've nearly sold up. Oh, marvellous. I think I'll hire the free trade hall next year. <laughs> Sorry, Mavis, but I got talking to a lady about pottery. She was giving me one or two tips about glazing. Well, you seem to have plenty of room now, don't you? Uh, now, where's my box? Mavis? It's not here. My pottery's gone. Oh, where could it have gone to? Well, I don't know. Oh, oh, oh hey, me. what are you doing? That's my pottery you're smashing to pieces. You are? Oh, no. My beautiful sugar bowl. Who put my pottery on this, this stupid stall? Well, don't look at me. It wasn't my fault. Not me either. It was Percy gave us all this rubbish. Well, that's what I thought it was for. Well, wouldn't anybody? A box full of old pots? There were three months' work there. Three months. Wedging and kneading, throwing and centering, shaping and trimming. I've done some marvellous lips. Marvellous. Vandals. Philistines. Never more. mind, Mavis. He might be back when he's needed another load. Still, it might take him three months. Oh, hey, what a time I've had. I don't know when I've enjoyed myself so much. Where's Stanley? Uh, well, he had a win this afternoon. Oh, aye. He'd be down the Legion, converting good money into hangover. <laughs> <laughs> Still, he's entitled to his pleasures. He doesn't get all that many. <laughs> hey, you know that cake I made? Yeah. Only the deputy mayor bought it. Oh, right. Yeah, it was the first to go. Hey, and Annie Walker stood there best part of the afternoon, gathering dust like a ball of wax fruit. <laughs> Ilde. Yeah. I've got something I want to tell you. All right, what's that? Well, it's um, very private, you know. Private? Yeah. What sort of private? Well, it's to do with me and Marion. Oh, you've not changed your minds about getting married, have you? Oh, I think you'd be very silly. I mean, if ever there was a couple no, no, really no, suited... No, we haven't changed our minds, no. Well, what is it, then? Well, it's more to do with Marion than me. Go on, Eddie. She's pregnant. Oh, Eddie. We're not unhappy about it, just the opposite. We're very pleased. Oh, no, but it's the wrong way to start, love. And I have to say this, I'm surprised at Marion. Very surprised. Well, it did say two of us, you know. No need for dirty talk, Eddie. No, it's the woman what has the baby, so it's her what decides the circumstances. Still, I think you're being a bit rough on Marion. Now, look, Eddie. I know in your case it'll probably be all right because, well, you love each other and you're going to get married. But in hundreds of cases, it can be a tragedy, you know. Oh, I've seen too many of my friends ruin their lives through... through having a love child. They never get over it. It seems to drag them down somehow. Cos nine times out of ten, the father just wasn't interested after... after he'd had his pleasure. So, you see, it's... it's not just a question of what's right as far as God's concerned. There is the practical side as well. I knew you'd feel like this. I told Marion you'd feel like this. She wasn't for telling you, but I, but I thought, well, after what you've done for me, I mean, living in your house all these years and being very comfortable, well, I thought you had a right to know. But I still say we're not apologising. We're very happy, especially me. And after we're married, I'm, I'm going to put it in the paper and I'm going to write it on every wall I can find. Yeah, well, I'm very happy for you and all, Eddie. And I'll tell you one thing. Whatever it is, boy or girl, 
is going to have a very good dad and a very happy life. Can't miss. Caught the bus near straight away. Yes, I suppose it must have been a shock. Well, a surprise. All right, a shock then. But, Mum, I am 33 years of age. You must have been expecting it to happen at some point. But what else is there to talk about? But I thought we'd covered all of that. But what else, Mum? No, we're not going out tomorrow. All right, we'll see. Yeah, throw them on. That was my mum. So I gathered. Ringing up to say she's sending you a dirty big cheque for a wedding present. She wants to have another chat. What about? She wouldn't say. Six. Seven. Hey, there's a dog here. What? Eight. Sorry, it's hundred now. Nine. You know, from City Morning Kent to Keithley. They'd moved, you see, and then dog Eleven. went missing and turned up right back in Keithley. Very same house where they used to live. Dirty. This is here, must have gone right across London. Forty. They always put things like that in the paper, 50. don't they? Dogs finding the way home. It's fantastic, though, isn't it? Do you know what amazing dogs, you know? Intelligence 80. must have. Intelligence? I see. Walking 200 miles after they just moved. I'd call it daft. Sweaty one. To find its way home at all is Sweaty more than what two. you can do most nights. Don't, so don't you start talking about intelligence or dogs. Sweaty four. Hey, do you have to do Sweaty that? Sweaty five. I've got to keep up the programme or it's no good. Ooh, God give yourself a rest on Sunday, you know. He's slinging sides of beef about all week and comes home to exercise. I think he's mental. You want to start doing a bit of exercise. I don't, you know. You do, you know, because you're in the heart attack bracket, you. Hey, Terry, now. Well, he is his age. Sitting on his backside all day, smoking and drinking. You want to start? Listen, according to you, the last thing I want to do is strain myself picking one of them up. Oh, strain yourself, you. That'll be the day. Yeah, but you wouldn't start with that weight, would you? I'd make out a programme for you just to start you getting fit. Listen, forget it. I get all the exercise I want. That's the nice thing about this house, you know, with the pub being on the other end of the road. <laughs> I get me exercise automatically. Oh, God. And as soon as they open, I shall be going for my little jog. Well, if it's any consolation to you, I believe Emily made nearly £200, all for charity. Well, it's not a lot of consolation. Well, if he thinks more of his pots than he does of you. Oh, well, how would you feel, Rita? I mean, I took him in to breed his pottery down for the arts and crafts stand, and when he comes, what greets his gaze? People smashing them all up. Well, they weren't up to much. Oh, there were things he'd made, Rita. I mean, you might not have thought they were very wonderful, but they were very special to Victor. I mean, well, I just wanted the ground to swallow me up. I don't see how I can ever speak to him again. Oh, no, love. Eh, yeah, give us a package of them strong mints, will you? I'll tell you what, when I pop off, you'll know where I'm buried. There'll be a big load of mint growing up from the grave. Still off the fangs? <laughs> yeah. I've informed the Chancellor. He's having to read you his budget. <laughs> hey, you'll put a lot of weight on you, will you know? At least a stone. Oh, well, I'm cutting down on the ale, you see, so one will cancel out the other. Oh, what's it in aid of? Are you uh, doing a marathon or something? I'm getting married, aren't I? Oh, well, nice to know you're doing the right thing by it, any road. What do you mean by that? Oh, well, come on, Yates. I mean, next door you've been living over the brush for years. I mean, Elsie Tanner can turn a blind eye. I'm sure she can. Just as well I can see on his F here, innit? Ta da. Ta. Ah, <laughs> yeah, okay. Aren't folk touchy? Well, we're moving in, Mum. Is Gail and Nicky with you? No, I'm going back for them. She just cleaned around the last few corners, so I thought I'd get a start on shifting the stuff. Oh, well, I don't know what we're going to do with that tea chest, Brian. Honest, I don't, love. Oh, never mind, love, with money. It's only the bits and pieces we don't install in the garage. Now, the rest of it's a stereo. Hey, you don't mind if we leave it here, do you? Brian, if you don't annoy the neighbours, love, you're not annoying me. Right now, then, I've had a decent breakfast. Well, never mind about that. Mum, I can wait. No, love, it's no bother. I mean, I've been to communion. I've had none myself, so I'm going to make it anyway. That's OK, Mum. Brian, sit down. I'll make you some breakfast. All right, love. Mum! <sighs> Mum. All right, all right. Live here and starve. I don't care. I shan't say a word. But I'll tell you something. Go round and fetch my grandson, and I shall feed him any time he doesn't have any breakfast. All right? Mm, I love Sunday. It's 
wonderful doing now, isn't it? Yeah, I could get good at it with more practice. <laughs> You'll have plenty of experience of that. Putting your feet up, I mean. Oh, aye, that's one way of looking at things. I know they used to be terrible, Sundays, when our Linda and Dennis were at home. We used to have our best rows on Sunday. Was that because it was the only day you were all at home? It was the only day I had any flaming strength. Well, it sounds livelier than it was round our house. Sundays was all best behaviour and round to me Auntie Edith's for tea. Honestly, that afternoon could last for about a year if it were raining. Hey, why I think on? Will your mother want any Sunday dinner out? Oh, I hope not. We've not got a joint route, have we? Well, not unless you've got one. We'd better get summer, do not we? Oh, what a tin of salmon will do a salad. Oh, I suppose I'd better tidy up, haven't I? Listen, she can take us as she finds us. She'll find fault if she wants to, whatever you do. Oh, get off. I bet she's really very pleased. Oh, yeah, getting her daughter off the shelf at last. I didn't mean it that way. Well, that's how my mum sees it. I can tell, I can tell, because she hasn't said a word against Eddie. Well, why should she? Cos every boyfriend I've ever had has been a very nice boy but. There's always been a but. Excepting in the case of Rodney Linklater. What do you? Well, she thought the sun shone out of him cos he went to the grammar school and he spoke nicely and he didn't have a quip. Oh, for God. <laughs> if there's ever anything in the paper about him, you know, she tells me even now. Is he famous as someone? He is in the round table. Oh, uh. Rodney Linklater's picture was in the paper again. He was handing a cheque over for charity. And what she means, Elsie, but what she doesn't say is, if you'd laid your stall out our Marion, you could have been Mrs Linklater. I went out with him twice. Every mummy has her little dreams, you know. Well, Eddie is not the stuff my mummy's little dreams are made of. <laughs> hey, have you thought? She might be coming round to talk you out of him. Oh, well, I hope not, Elsie, because I don't want to have to tell her why she's not on. Do you mean to say that you haven't told her? No, and I'm not going to, neither. Why not? I see, my mother's very proper. She'll be shocked. Oh, come on. She'll be chuffed a little mint balls, especially when she finds out she's going to be a grandma. You don't know my mum, I do. So no little cracks about putting the feet up, eh, love? Oh. Hey. Is this one of your pigeons? Could be, could be, but then again, I don't know how many I'm supposed to have in here. Well, it seems a bit off-colour, you know. What do you know about pigeons? Well, only to the extent that if I see one fall off a wall on its head, I don't reckon it's doing too well for a pigeon. It did what? Well, I was standing there watching it walking down the house house roof, and I was thinking, like, hey, don't they walk funny? Well, they are pigeons, old, you know, and it just, like, uh, fell off on its head. Yeah, well, I'm exaggerating a little bit. Anyway, I put it back on the wall, and it's, uh, well, it didn't seem to have much idea. Seems to be all right now, I think. Thought I'd better bring it round, any love. <laughs> hey, do you think I'd better put it in there? I mean, it, with the others, it might have a bit of a disease or something. Well, I don't know. You're the pigeon fancier. Yeah? Listen, what I know about pigeons, you could write twice on the back of a piece of confetti. Tell you what, we'll leave it to its own devices, eh? That seems happy enough now. Uh, tell you what, the wife's making a bit of dinner in there, and you know what they like? They don't like you in the road, do they? So do you fancy coming down to the pub and having a scoop with me? A slow to one, but... Oh, well. Well, we've got the mother-in-law coming. Well, the mother-in-law to be, you know. It's the first official visit since the announcement, you know, so I can't go in stinking the mail, can I? Come on, your bones. Put your cat on the bed. Stand to attention. Look, you don't know Marion's mother. So I'll tell you this. You have got to start the way you mean to go on. Now, either she's going to rule the roost or you are. Uh, tell me this. Is it your usual custom to have a drink on a Sunday afternoon? I've got to admit, it is. Right, as the poet says, above all else, to thine own self be true. Come. Is that enough? Oh, I love that. I'll be plenty. Now, one of these days, they'll see me that peeled potatoes. Oh, Rufus, darling. Yeah, well, why don't they? Don't do a flaming hands tap. You just wait on him hand and foot. Look, listen, love, in the end, you just settle for an easy life. Easy? Yeah, and to tell you the truth, kid, I'd rather your dad be out when I'm cool. Can he only get some of your feet? Yeah. And he knows he does. And that's why he does it. And where's he now? Down the boozer, spending money he hasn't got, according to him. Oh, love, listen. Well, it gets me mad. I mean, I'm not humping beef around just to keep him in beer and fags. I mean, what does he do all day? Just swans around in that car of his. Comes and goes as he pleases, spending other people's money. Well, listen, love, you won't change him. 
You know what? A couple of years in the army, do him the world of good. Half? Is that your custom and practice? Oh, no. Two pints here, Fred. Hey, no cracks in the glasses, eh? Or anywhere else. Look, mother-in-law, you've got to be educated. Otherwise, give them half a chance and they've got you there. I know it's all a laugh, but it doesn't seem any sense in upsetting them unless they have to. Well, women are like dogs. They've got to be trained. If they're properly trained, they'll give you loyalty, companionship and a lot of fun. But if they're not, they can turn on you. Hey, you want to listen to him? He's an expert. They ought to be. The homework he's had. I picked up a bit here and there, you know. Look, you've got to separate the wife from the mother-in-law. It's the first essential step in training. When they're trained, are they happy? Happy, of course they're happy. I'm only asking because I'd sooner live with a happy woman than an unhappy one, you know. Oh, Vera's as happy as a sandboy. She's got everything she wants, even an eye level grill. Happy as the day is long, honest. Until he comes home. Nice to meet you, Mrs. Willis. I've heard an awful lot about you from Marion. Oh, well, it's mutual, Mrs. Tanner. I'm sure I've met many a time to pop down here and see how Marion was fixed, but it never seemed to be convenient to Marion. Oh, Mum, sit down and have a cup of coffee. Dear. Oh, they do bosh you about, don't they? <laughs> I suppose we just have to be quiet and put up with it. <laughs> You've grown up children and all, Mrs. Uh, Tanner. Yeah, a couple. I think Marion said. Not that I ever see much of them. Both settled, are they? You could say that, yes. They're both settled. Well, it's a comfort to know. Yes, it is, yes. A great comfort. Want a biscuit with your coffee, Mum? Oh, it's a bit late in the day for a biscuit, Marion. What are you doing with the shopping bag of a Sunday? Oh, well, I wanted to bring you these, and they're awkward to carry. I thought you'd like to look through them, and they might give you various ideas. But, Mum... And Mrs Crabstick sent you this one. She saved it for you specially. Now, you know there Edith got married last June? Well, she had a dress almost exactly like one in here. I could find it for you. But, Mum, I've told you, we're getting married in a register office. Yes, and I've been thinking about what you said, Marion. Now, I know you're trying to be very sensible, but I also know it's not what you really want. It is, Mum. I really don't think so. Do you, Mrs Tanner? I think you have to listen to my and Mrs Willis. I have listened many a time, Mrs Tanner. Oh, the times we've talked about your wedding day. Mum, are you talking about when I was a little girl? Well, it's still that same big day, Marion, even if it has been a long time coming. And it's my privilege to pay for it. You should have a proper wedding, in church and in white. Hey, listen, look, why don't you go down to the Rover, start dragging your dad out, eh? It'll be ready in a quarter of an hour. Yeah, all right. And uh, do you think you could shift that dumbbell, eh? Make the place look a bit tidy. Stick it behind the sofa. OK. Uh... Right, it won't be long. Sir, so. hello. Oh, God. Sauce that goes, sir. The select, look. On the 31st of October. Yeah, hang on a minute, look. Fred! October the 31st. Have we got anything in the select? Not that I can see. You're in luck, my love. Good. Cos Nelly Harvey would give a right arm for this too, you know. Society wedding of the year. Oh, I know Mrs Walker only does buffies, you know, a stand-up job. But if you want to sit down, do you see? Well, we've got to bring in the uh, the special caterers. Oh, no, buffy was what we wanted. Oh, great. We can make special arrangements in your case, Yates, only uh, you'll have to put a deposit on the trough, you know. <laughs> Very good, that, Fred. <laughs> Mum says it'll be on the table in ten minutes. I mean, Carl's better when it's cool. Hey, come on, it's uh, your shout. Same again, is it? No, I'll give him half. He'll only snore in front of the telly all afternoon. <laughs> hey, Same you're, for me. You're not going, are you? The lad's in the chair and he's loaded. Well, I've got to put a tie on, make myself look a bit presentable, you know. Right, wash behind the ears and another good man gone. Are you doing any courting, young fella? Courting? Wouldn't know what that was. Knocking about with women. Nobody's steady. The handsome fella like you are not courting. If you got more sense, he keeps his money in his pocket. Well, that's perhaps why uh, he can buy around and you can't. I mean, you do enough courting for two, don't you, Jacko? 
One of these days, Freddy, your sense of humor is going to get you in trouble. For what we are about to receive, may the Lord make us truly thankful. Fine, come on, let's help ourselves. You'd have to say grace to impress girl, Mom. I mean, you know she's not very religious. Well, you can make an effort of a Sunday, Brian. I've been down to church today asking favours. Oh, you're keeping up your first Fridays? Well, never miss, love. What's that? It's nine first Fridays, girl. You know, if, if, uh, if there's a favour you want, well, you go to Mass and Communion, uh, first Friday of every month for nine months, and you offer up your prayers for it. Well, if you do that, do you think you get it? Oh, well, yes, if it's right thing, yes. Of course you do, love. If not, well, you get a bit of understanding, you know. But I like to think you get something. Nicky? Nicky? Come on, lovey. Go on, Brian. Oh, whoever it is, don't let him in, Brian. Ah, the very man. Somebody said you were here. Well, I am, yeah. Yeah, lucky for me, because I'm useless with this spanner. <laughs> uh, listen to me, Carveretta's giving a bit of trouble, but don't ask me. Look, I know it's Sunday, but uh, how are you fixed for having lunch? Well, I'm on my dinner. Yeah, well, any time to suit yourself. In that case, Tuesday morning. Uh, no, no, I've got a bit of a journey on tomorrow, you know. Uh, no, the thing is, you see, it, it goes all right, and then it stops for no reason. Uh, you can't put no confidence in it. Well, all right, fetch around it morning, first thing. Well, couldn't you have a look at it today? You know, I want an early start. No, tomorrow. I'm sorry. I've got things to do, and my dinner's getting cold. I thought you were keen to get your business going. Tomorrow morning, first thing. Forget it. And another thing you could get, and all. Knocking at my door at half past nine at night when you wanted a quarter of tea. I've been here five minutes and I'm falling out with the neighbours already. You're quite right, Brian. Falling out with the customers more to the point. They can't have customers they don't need. They think everything's a favour. You've got to keep in with people, Brian. Oh, yeah. Spend an army time getting filthy over some fiddling job and get paid at the bar and the rovers. They can keep it. I didn't sell my own home to start doing favours. I'm not interested in being a nice fellow anymore. I'm interested in being rich. She is. Eddie. I've only had one. Come on. Mrs. Willis, very nice to see you. It's very nice to see you, Eddie. Keep him well. I certainly can't grumble. And yourself? Keep him well. Oh, I like a jar of pickles. <laughs> I was very pleased to hear the news from Marion. The news? Well, it was news that you'd named the day, even if it wasn't entirely unexpected. Oh, ah, yeah. Talking of which, I've just been and booked a very select venue for the zoo after. So if you can smell ale on me breath, well, it's all in a good cause. I mean, you can't go in and not partake, can you? <laughs> oh, and did you part with money when you made the booking? Well, I didn't have to. They know me in this particular hostelry, you know. Oh, well, that's all right, then. Eddie, my mum's very keen for us to get married in Bury. Oh? In church. Well, it's church. It's not an unusual place for a wedding. I'm sorry, Mrs Willis, I don't think we want to get married in church. Is it that you're against religion in your family, then? Perhaps you are. No, I'm not against nothing. I mean, anybody's religions aren't right by me. It's just that, well, I'm not a very big church goer, you know. I think I'll pop next door and borrow some gravy browning. We haven't got a joint, Elsie. Well, I'll pop next door and borrow some it. Thanks. Well, Eddie, I'm glad you've no objection in principle. Because Marion was christened in that church in Bury. She was confirmed and all, and I'd like to see her married there. Eddie, me mum wants to see me in a veil with a train and bridesmaids. Yeah, well, me and Marion thought we'd just have a quiet registry office, do you know? Well, she tells me you haven't even discussed a white wedding. Uh, well, to be honest, no. I, I mean, apart from anything else, it's a dear do, isn't it? I mean, we need every penny we can get hold of. I will pay for the wedding. Now, look, Mum, we don't want you spending all your money. Yeah, you hold on to your money. You'll find plenty of use for it. That money was put aside for one use and one use only. It's the day I've provided for. The day your father provided for. Oh, I do wish he was here now. You'd listen to him. Now, Mom... He thought the world of you. The world, he did. And what do you think he wants to see on his daughter's wedding day? I don't have any friends in Bury anymore, Mum. I mean, there's you and me, Uncle Wilf. I don't want to get married there. I want to get married here, where I live. I mean, Eddie doesn't know anybody in Bury. Well, it doesn't matter to me, love. I mean, it's where you want to get married. You want to get married here, then? Yes. Then very well. The church in Bury has all the associations, of course, but if it's not what you want, 
No doubt there's a very nice church round here. It's all right by me, I'm game. Well, if it means so much to her. Perhaps we'd better settle it before she books Westminster Abbey. We'd better see the vicar as soon as possible. I think we'd better. Now, there's a dressing here that something like would look lovely on you. Right, old lads. Those of you at home have got dinners to go to. Those who haven't got homes, you're not having your dinners here. Tell you what, we'll get your mum a bottle of beer. Eh? That'll keep her. Uh, a bottle of lager, please, Betty. Uh, better than that, make it three. And we can keep a company, can't we? There we are. Three bottles of lager, one fifty-six. Yeah, I'll put a pound to that with you, Tim. All right, and I want it back. See you later. You don't begrudge your mum a bottle of beer, you know what I mean? If you do, here. you? Don't be daft. No, here, here. Look, just get the ale, will you? Fred, not with those, will you, lovey? Right. Thank you, love. Thank you, darling. Now, come on. Your mum's been slaving over that flipping dinner. Uh, I won't be a minute. Just get me fags. Listen, my comical friend. You just keep your mouth shut in front of my family or anybody else, right? Certainly. But, uh, Jacko, if you want a friendly bit of advice, if you must entertain redheads in that cab of yours, uh, well, do yourself a favour and take the sign off the top. It makes it very conspicuous. I know it's conspicuous. So's a fat lip. Conspicuous. Right? And so is a redhead. You've been told. Come on. <laughs> All right, chicken. We're back now. You can serve it up. Oh, I just get addled. Don't blame her. What's the matter with you? Are you joining the women's lib or something? No, I'm starting a new one. It's called me lib. All right. She's most likely gone round to Ivy's on the couch for something. Hey, is that the meat? Not a lot, is it? I mean, for a lad who works in the business, it's not a very good joint, is it? It'll do. It's big enough considering the contributions some people made to it. Oh, come on, you get it for now. Off the back of a wagon, out the back door. No, I don't. I pay for my meat. I get it cheap, that's all. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and what did Fred G mean? What do you mean? What did he mean? What he said. You don't take any notice of Fred. You don't take that man seriously. Oh, but you took him seriously, because when you went back, you warned him off what he was saying. Listen, you, I don't care what size boots they give you in the army, lad. Round here, you tread carefully, because I'm still your dad, and I will not be interrogated by you, right? No, but you're happy to be supported by me, aren't you? Supported? Yeah, and I'm coughing up my money every week. It's not me who's always shying a kitty. Now, listen, hang on, lad. No, I won't hang on, because if he's right him in the pub, and that's why my man don't see your money. Listen, I am not having any of this. And you're not having any more of this, neither. Hey, now, come on, what's going on, eh? I could hear you right down the street. Nothing. Nothing? What's it all about? I don't know. Maybe he can tell you, eh? Is anybody gonna tell me, eh? Ryan, I'm pouring your tea, love. Oh, oh there you are. Happy birthday, love. Many happy days. Mm, tell them. Yeah, say happy birthday to your daddy. Thanks, Owen, Nick. Oh, oh, you're enough getting heavy. <laughs> You getting old. <laughs> <laughs> You're right, I'm getting past it. Oh my god, if you think 25's getting old, wait till you get to my age, then you'll know about it. Ah, I don't feel a day over 50. It's for me. Mm. Those two have just come, and that's from me and Nicky. Ah. Oh, smash your net over, Nick. Uh, look, Brian, I didn't bother posting it, but it didn't seem worth it. Thanks, Mum. Hey, this one's from Auntie Veronica Uncle Peter. Who's that one from? It's from my dad. Oh, yes, when I went on Sunday, love, he said he was sending you a card. What did he put inside it? Two five-pound notes. Oh, he shouldn't have done that. It's going to leave him short. Do you think you should send it back, Brian? You know, with a letter. I can't do that, love. Oh, no, love, I know he wanted you to have something. I said I'd get you something, but he said, no, he said it had to come from him. You will write to him, though. Yeah, I will. First thing this morning. My God, I wish you were here. Oh, still, we're not going to upset ourselves, eh? Your dad wanted you to enjoy your birthday. Right, uh, can you manage two eggs, love? Start. Oh, yeah. I like standing there like a twit. I do this for fun. I'm sorry, Eddie. You'll have to excuse me, Marion. Hey, up. 
You're both looking very smart this morning. You're not thinking of you'll open to Gretna Green, are you? We're going up to All Saints. We've got an appointment with the vicar. Oh, I'm going to say old nut all, are you? Excuse me. You don't know what he's like, do you? Well, not really, not. I've seen him around, you know. Only some of these vicars can be a bit funny, you know, if you're not a regular client. Like. What's he like, do you know? Well, I've not heard much against him. Oh. Not run out of petrol, have you? I'm not a complete idiot, you know, Eddie. Why don't you get Brian Tilsley to have a look at it for you? Uh, yeah, and he's back with his mum now, him and Gail, you know. It's handy having a mechanic as yeah, a neighbour. That's what I thought. Said he can't fit me in yet, though. Oh! Well, I think you're there for the duration. You're not going anywhere in this. Well, I've got to. I've got to be in Bolton this month. I'll tell you what, Eddie. We could push start this. What you mean by we is that I could do the pushing while you sit behind the wheel doing the starting? Yeah, well, you don't mind, do you? You know, I wouldn't ask, but I'm desperate. Oh, OK, mate. <sighs> Make sure the hand breaks off. But with a wedding coming off, I don't want to do myself a mischief. <laughs> Eddie! And mind your suit! <sighs> hey, uh, Atter, hey, uh, bring some more of that sausage home tonight, eh? No, I can't promise anything, ma'am. There might not be any. Well, bring out... Oh, oh. Oh, oh, there you are. Happy birthday, love. Many happy days. Mm. Yeah. Tell, Mum. Yeah. Say happy birthday to your daddy. Thanks, Owen, Nick. Oh, oh, you're enough getting heavy. <laughs> it's you getting old. <laughs> you're right. I'm getting past it. Oh, my God, if you think 25's getting old, wait till you get to my age, then you'll know about it. Ah, I don't feel a day over 50. It's for me. Mm. Well, will just come. And that's from me and Nicky. Ah. Oh, smashing that, Owen, Nick. Uh, look, Brian, I didn't bother posting it, but it didn't seem worth it. Thanks, Mum. Hey, this one's from Auntie Veronica and Uncle Peter. Who's that one from? It's from my dad. Oh, yes, when I went on Sunday, love, he said he was sending you a card. What have you put inside it? Two five-pound notes. Oh, he shouldn't have done that. It's going to leave him short. Do you think you should send it back, Brian? You know, with a letter. I can't do that, love. Oh, no, love, I know he wanted you to have something. I said I'd get you something, but he said, no, he said it had to come from him. You will write to him, though. Yeah, I will. First thing this morning. My God, I wish you were here. Oh, still, we're not very upset ourselves, eh? Your dad wanted you to enjoy your birthday. Right, uh, can you manage two eggs, love? Start. Oh, yeah. I like standing here like a twit. I do this for fun. Oh, I'm sorry, Eddie. You'll have to excuse me, Marion. Hey, up. You both looking very smart this morning. You're not thinking of eloping to Gretna Green, are you? We're going up to All Saints. We've got an appointment with the vicar. Oh, I'm going to say old nut all, are you? Excuse me. Don't know what he's like, do you? Well, not really, not. I've seen him around, you know. Only some of these vicars can be a bit funny, you know, if you're not a regular client. Like. What's he like, do you know? Well, I've not heard much against him. Oh. Not run out of petrol, have you? I'm not a complete... Idiot, you know, Eddie. Why don't you get Brian Tilsley to have a look at it for you? Uh, yeah, and he's back with his mum now, him and Gail, you know. It's handy having a mechanic as yeah, a neighbour. That's what I thought. Said he can't fit me in yet, though. <laughs> oh! Well, I think you're there for the duration. You're not going anywhere in this. Well, I've got to. I've got to be in Bolton this month. I'll tell you what, Eddie. We could push start this. What you mean by we is that I could do the pushing while you sit behind the wheel doing the starting? Yeah, well, you don't mind, do you? You know, I wouldn't ask, but I'm desperate. Oh, OK, mate. Make sure the hand breaks off. But with a wedding coming off, I don't want to do myself a mischief. <laughs> Eddie! And mind your suit! <sighs> hey, uh, Atter, hey, uh, bring some more of that sausage home tonight, eh? No, I can't promise anything, ma'am. There might not be any. Well, bring out own if, it, if it's only a dead cat. Oh, hey, oh. The beast from the Black Lagoon walks again. There's only tea left, eh? Mark it, make a pot of tea, I'll tell you, will you? Make it yourself. I've got to go to work in a minute. You could have had one made while you sat there reading my paper. Get off, and it's not your paper, neither. Who paid the last paper bill and the one before that at all? 
What time did you crawl in then last night? Oh, well, it must have been gone three. You can't be working all that time. Of course, I got I, I got this fare from out of town, didn't I? A bloke from Rochdale, been in town and playing Jack, Blackjack and winning. Oh, aye. Hey, what did you get? What take then? You're the flaming up the lying swine. Only tried to leap out when I got to the lights in Rochdale, didn't he? Hey? Hell of a job to catch him, I know. He only had two quid in his wallet. Hmm. Trust you to be made a mug of. What have I done with my flaming eyeliner? I suppose he had two heads on all this fella from Rochdale. You are. Or were he one of them fellas that wears a bra? Listen, shut up, you. Here's your father you're talking to, you Well, know. just because my mum's daft enough to believe your stupid tales, don't mean to say I have to. Listen, you shut your mouth and keep it shut, and me and you are gonna fall out. Hey, are you so flaming knowing? No, no, I was just telling you now, Terry is late for work. Um, come to think of it, so are you, love. Hey, listen, I don't need you to crack whip, you know. Do you know, I used to wonder why your mother used to call you Idle Jack. I must have needed me head testing. Anyway, while I think on, I want you two tipping up tonight. You've had your housekeeping money. Not the housekeeping, the mortgage money. I've got to pay it tomorrow, so we'll have it tonight, right? And before you start crying poverty, you've been working late a lot recently. You must be clocking up a fortune, you. Spending one more, like. Yeah, ta -ra. Listen, you. You just watch it. Just watch it. In all honesty, I would have preferred you to have been active members of the church. Well, we haven't been in the past, Vicar. There, no good saying we have, but uh, we might be coming in the future. I in fact, we'll definitely be coming again because uh, we want to get the baby christened, you know. If we're blessed in the fullness of time, like you, eventually, you... Oh, don't misunderstand me. I'm always pleased when two people decide to make a commitment to each other in church. So we'll call the bands next Sunday, shall we? Yes, please, if you would. And at the end of the wedding, we can discuss the uh, ceremony and its meaning. Yeah, right. If you give us a bit of warning about that, uh, only uh, I work awkward times, you know. The mornings are usually dodgy for me. Mm. What is your work, Mr Gates? Oh, he's with the local council. Yeah, on the old bins, you know. <laughs> you mean the refuse collection department? Yeah, on the wagon. Uh, we were wondering about having the organ playing, weren't we, Eddie? Mr Yates, you must be heaven sent. You are. I've got a great pile of old hassocks at the back of the vestry that I've been trying to dispose of for weeks. I'm afraid the dustmen have turned a deaf ear. Ah, yeah, well, uh, you see, hassocks, it's not exactly your domestic refuge. Then again, it's not exactly your industrial waste either. It's been a great worry. Uh, we could have the organist, could we? Could you use your influence? Oh, no, sweat vicar. I'll have a way with the lads. Uh, and at the vicarage, there's an old mattress that Mrs Nuttall has been trying to get rid of. Well, that's what we're put on this earth for, innit? To help each other. Now then, what about these chocolate father Christmases? Oh, you know how I feel about them. No, I don't. Yes, you do. I remember saying last year when we were doing the Christmas order, well, in my opinion, there's something not quite nice about them. What's wrong with them? They're a good mate. Don't they taste nice or something? I'm not talking about the taste. It... Well, it's the lack of taste. I mean, don't you see? There's just something wrong about eating Father Christmas. It's like cannibalism. Oh, give over. All I'm bothered about is how many we can sell. Because we don't want to get stuck with any, do we? Because if we do, you and me will have to eat them. Oh, I won't. I'm adamant about that. I won't eat one. Do you know, when I was eight years old, I refused to eat a marzipan robin. I got my legs smacked as well, but I wouldn't eat it. You've always been one on your own, you, haven't you? Well, I'll say a dozen. I don't know. This Christmas order's a real vine. Now then, Christmas tree lights. I take it you've no conscientious objection to tree lights? No, of course not. Come to think of it, the one and only time I let you do the Christmas order, we were mowed out with tree lights. Well, you didn't get stuck with them. Only because you bought two sets. I bet you've never used them. Have you ever even had a tree? I will this year, though. Definitely. I'll put my tree up and I'll put all the lights on it, both sets. Look like Blackpool illumination. Although, when you're on your own, it hardly seems worth putting a tree up. Why don't you invite Victor for Christmas dinner? You could wear paper hats and pull crackers and get him drunk and have your way with him. I've told you already, Rita, I don't suppose I'll ever see Victor again. I just don't think he'll want to pursue our relationship. I thought he'd never stop going on about his old mattress, and here's me trying to discuss him with him. <laughs> oh. oh, hello, Mum. What are you doing here? Hello, Ma. Hey, Mrs. Winifred. Well, I, I was just saying to Mrs. Tanner, I had to come over. I never closed my eyes last night thinking about the wedding. 
Why, what's up? Well, now that you're having a church wedding after all, are you sure you wouldn't rather be married from home and have the wedding at St Barnabas? You used to go there when you were a little girl. We've already booked the church, Mum. We did it this morning. All Saints here in Weatherfield. You booked it? Already? Oh, but Marion... Mum, it's what we want. All our friends are here. I'm not here. Your Uncle Wilf's not here. Yeah, but you're not friends, are you? Uh, your family, like. Mum, it's all settled. We can't change it and we don't want to. And then again, if you got married from home, you could have your reception at the Cavendish. They have a special wedding reception suite there. Lovely. Oh, well, I suppose if you've booked the church, I'll just have to find somewhere nice round here. I'll look round. I'll find you somewhere suitable. Yeah, well, we've uh, booked the reception and all. It's a very nice place. It's uh, dead handy, isn't it, Alice? Oh, yes, very handy. Oh, well, I must say you've got everything cut and dried. I just hope it's a good place, that's all. Look, I'll tell you what, why don't we go for a little drink there now? A sort of uh, celebration. Put another pint in there, please, Chief. You know, I wouldn't ride in that cab of yours for a gold clock. Well, I shouldn't imagine you ride much in taxis, do you? More like a bus queue merchant to me. Give over. I've got a motor out there that'll make your cab look like a kid's bogey. Yeah. Look, I'm on about the alias up in, mate. If you ever get breathalyzed, you'll be bad for life. Give over. I'm a moderate drinker, me. That's your third pint of mine, Ollie. Now think about your passengers. They won't want seat belts, they won't flipping parachutes. Yeah, well, I'm not working this afternoon. I'm going to put my head down for a couple of hours, aren't I? Tonight, that's when I do my bit. What bit's that? That redhead you had across the road or something a bit fresher, eh? Listen, I'm getting sick of you going on about my private affairs. Our Terry heard you the other day, so just keep your mouth shut, eh? And especially when the wife's about. Why should I? Fellas trade union, mate. You don't drop another fella that's in it. All right? Just have a bit of decency. Hello, lovey. I bet mean, while I've been slaving, you've been in here, haven't you, sucking since opening time? Listen, I've only just walked in. I've not even had a chance to pay for me pint yet. How much do I owe you, friend? Does that include what the ladies are having? Oh, I will have to have the lager. <laughs> oh, thanks, Jack. Did I you say, uh, and your own, Fred? Aye, get off. You know what they say? When gob shut, throat get dry. Right then, Ma, what are you having? Out of a sherry wine, please. Usual for you, love. Thanks, love. What about you, else? Oh, come on, I'll have you carry them. We got time for a drink. I thought you were going to show me where you were having your wedding reception. This is it, Mum. Before did it, it'll be in the best room. In this place, a wedding reception. Uh, is that a sweet sherry or a dry one? My daughter is not having her wedding reception in a backstreet alehouse. Never in this world. Do you hear me? Never. <laughs> You sure you won't have another drop of sherry? No, thank you. I want nothing more in here. And the sooner we leave this place, the better pleased I'll be. Is that Yates' future mother-in-law over there? That's her. Not exactly a bundle of sunshine, is she? Hey, she looks to me as if she's convalescing from sitting on a broken bottle or something. There's been a slight argument over the wedding arrangements. Well, I'm not surprised. I mean, there she is sitting minding her own business and wham! He lands on her as a future son-in-law. <laughs> He's a nice lad, is Eddie. Oh, give over. Yates is a scouse git and you'll know it. He's been dumped on her like a bolt out the blue. He's what insurance people call uh, an act of God. There's no wonder that she's looking disgruntled and sour. He's all right, is Eddie, and Marion's mum's all right and all. I've only seen her twice, but from what I see of her, she's a good sort. Elsie, what, what mothers want for the daughters, for a, for a decent son-in-law, is somebody that they can respect. Somebody that can brag about, like doctors, and then comes like uh, bank managers, accountants. Th there's a sliding scale. But Yates? No. No, I mean, a bin man that's had his collar felt and seen the inside of a nick. Hey, I wonder if she knows about that. No, she does not. And make sure she doesn't find out from you. Me? Well, would I? Yes, you. You like causing trouble. Me? Yes, you, Frederick. It's that sort of feminine trait that goes with handbags and limp wrists. So just you keep your gob shut. Otherwise, I'll go straight in the ladies' toilet and write rude words about you all over the walls. I don't know how you could even consider such a place for a wedding reception. It's common. We like it. Well, you've got to admit it's handy and all our friends are here. I dare say you'd be better off with different friends then. Oh, Betsy. Yes, well. Um, 
This is Mrs. Willis, Marion's mother. Oh, how do you do? How do you do? <laughs> we brought her in to show where the reception was, you know. Oh, it's not in here, lovey. It's through there in the select. <laughs> well, we were just telling Mum, Mrs. Walker knows how to lay on a really nice do, doesn't she? Well, she should be able to after all these years. <laughs> oh, well, she'll do her best, no doubt. Yes. <laughs> It doesn't alter the fact that this is a backstreet public house. It's not what I wanted for my daughter's wedding breakfast. And what your poor father would say, I don't know. Listen, I've had enough of this argy-bargy. We're having a church wedding to please you, but there's got to be a bit of give and take. Now, it's all fixed. The reception's here, and nobody has to come who doesn't want to. So there's no use my saying anything, then? You and Marion will do just what you want. Right, well, that seems fair enough, then. How many tizzles are to get him married? It is our wedding, you know. Right. Glad we got that settled, then. Are you sure you won't have a drop of sherry? All right, Eddie. Just a small one. That's my girl. Thanks very much. You got Witherfield, eh? I didn't stop to give you a lift, son. Oh, sorry. Thought you had. It was the car decided to stop, not me. Do you know what's about cars? Yeah, do. Well, you get us going, I'll give you a lift home. Hey, come on over here, they're sly, they are. Oh, bloody crock, is a wag a load of monkeys. Now, come on over here. Come over hey, come on, I tell you. I'm trying to watch the telly here. Well, what's stopping you? Why don't you go out in the yard or something? That's the place for it. Get some fresh air in your lungs. Start it raining, hasn't it? Well, go in your bedroom. There's not enough room. Well, there's not enough room down here, neither, is there? And I'm trying to watch the telly. Well, at least the lad's trying to make some out of himself, which is more than can be said for you. The heaviest thing you ever pick up is a pint glass. You're frightened of rupturing yourself. I'll tell you something for now. I've never met a bodybuilder yet that did out for a woman. And it's not just bodybuilders now, well Two pints of bitter, please, Fred. <laughs> oh, you are old enough to drink, I hope. Oh, I. Eighteen last month. <laughs> Won't taste as good now it's legal. <laughs> are you sure you can manage a pint, you? <laughs> uh, listen, I'll give you a lift right home, you know, because I'm very grateful. No, oh, it's only five minutes from here. Where do you learn about cars? I did it in the garage when I was school. You know, youth employment scheme. What happened? Yes. Nothing. The year finished. I couldn't find anything permanent, and I've been looking around ever since. Well, I wish you luck, son. Thanks. You need it these days. Yeah. Yes, please, Betty. Oh. Same again. Oh, no, not for me. One sherry's quite enough if I to keep me wits about me. I'll have a slim line tonic, though. Right. Vodka and tonic and a slim line on its own, please. Okay, lovely. Why have you to keep your wits about you? Well, it's me evening class tonight, and I don't want to be dozy. Is this your English course, then, maybe? No, that was last year, oh. Betty. No, this year I've signed on for local history. It's Weatherfield from Roman times till the present day. Ever so interesting. Oh, yeah. Well, oh. We're out and round here, then. Good Queen Bess sleep here, or King Henry VIII do a bit of courting? No, this was not just kings and queens, Rita. It's about ordinary people and how they lived. Do you know, apparently at one time there were mines under here. Not gold mines, I suppose. No, no. coal mines, I think. Better get Fred digging in the cellar. At today's prices, it could be worth it. <laughs> Martini, half a lager and a pint of beer, please, Fred. Right, sunshine. Um, I won't be a minute. I just want to work with Alf Roberts. Oh, that's what you want. Oh, yeah. Alf, mate. Look, uh, I can look at your car tomorrow morning, mate, any time it suits you. I don't need you now. This young fella's fixed it for me. Oh, I see. And what was wrong with it? Oh, better do it in the car, but Right, then. You got a little garage down Canal Street. Yeah. Only a one-man place. Hey, come to think of it, though. Somebody was saying he was looking for a lad. Yeah? Have you got someone, you know? Ooh, I've no idea. Why don't you ask him? You know to lose, have you? Go on, I'll hold you there. What's his name? Oh, Tilsley. Brian Tilsley. Fair. Excuse me, Mr. Tilsley. Can I have a word with you? Sure. Alf Roberts was saying you might have a job going at your garage. I might have, yeah. I'm not bad with cars. I do hear in Whitehead's on Burnley Road. You know, youth training scheme. I'll tell you what, I can't talk to you right now. Uh, why don't you come around and see me at the garage? Okay. I'll do that. Thanks very much. 
See you. He's not much more than a kid, our Brian. That's what I want, Mum. Yeah. Somebody young. Young and cheap. Mr Tilsley, eh? Hey, when you get somebody working for you, you'll be a real tycoon. A proper boss, not just your own. Give over. I thought you were the boss. <laughs> well, that's what you keep telling me. <laughs> I hope your best man's a reliable sort. Who is he, by the way? Do you know I hadn't thought about that? Who do you think he'll get? Well, Stan, I suppose. I mean, he's my best mate round here, I suppose, Stan. Stan? I haven't met him, have I? Oh, do you want to meet him? Oh, he lives next door. He's bound to be in. He'll have his feet up in front of the fire. I, I don't think he's very suitable, love. Why not? Well, it's just not right, that's all. Well, what's wrong with him? Granted, he wouldn't win any beauty competitions. Marion's right, love. Your best man should be a bachelor. I didn't know that. I thought you just picked your best mate. Oh, no. This Stan, he's married, is he? Oh, yes, love, you could say that. He's, uh, he's as married as it's possible to be. Well, don't worry about it, sir. I'll think about it. That's right, Eddie. You think about it. And when Marion walks down the aisle in her white dress, a perfect bride for you, that's what we want. Everything exactly as it should be. Do you know, I'd hate to say Dad were right about hope, but you can have so much of a good thing. I'll go on the aisle for my nine, yeah. Nay, give your belly a chance, lad. Let your tea settle. All right. That's me ready for a night's hard grab. Hey, that's good to see, isn't it, hey, Lady Elijah? Oh, God forgive you. What are you doing all dressed up like a dog's dinner for? Look more like you're going for a night out on the town than going working. Me, I'm smart because I've got pride in my appearance, lad. Listen, V, I'll be working a little bit late tonight, so I'll try not to wake you up, eh? Turn on, sweetheart. Hey, before you disappear, you've forgotten something. What? We'll have to pay it mortgage tomorrow, so come on, let's be having you. You and all out, Terry. Yeah, all right. Look, I'll see you right tomorrow, V. Uh, you will, Ella's like. I have to pay it tomorrow dinner, so I want it now. Well, why don't you remind me, then? I've been telling you all flaming week. Oh, flaming not here. I'm off. Hang on. Hang on. There's only 18 quid here. Look, I need petrol for the car. I can't work without petrol, and it's eating it, isn't it? If we'd have got a new cab, like I said, instead of this flaming mortgage... Well, we had to live somewhere. Listen, you wanted to live here, so don't blame me. Well, I do blame you. I pay my share after he pays his share. I pay more than my share, and I'm sick of it. He's making it and he's chucking it away. Yeah, he's right. Do you know you're out all night? You must be making it. I mean, what the flaming hell are you doing with it? Listen, I am flogging my guts out. Times are hard, you know. Oh, shut Listen, up. they walk in, they're going by bus. I can't give it you if I've not got it. Well, I'm ten short. Can you let us have another ten out of it? I mean, I've just got to have it. Yeah. It's the last time. I'm sick of being a mug for him. If he doesn't put his fair share in next time, I'm away. Be a good thing and all. Might make a man of you. I'll tell you something else, lad. You won't be missed. You won't leave all now, Terry. I mean, you don't mean it, do you? Yes, I do. While he's poncing about in that car, I'm grafting for that money and it's hard work. I'm sick to death of being short because I'm keeping him in beer and fags and whatever else he's spending his money on. And tonight's the last time, because either he gets off my back, or I'm away. Well, come on, it's not for looking at. I couldn't, Elsie, not all that. Well, I'm certainly not going to frame it, nor am I going to throw it in the dustbin, the price of food, the way it is. So get it down, you. You're going to need building up with what you're going to have to go through. I'm getting married, Elsie, not training for the Olympic Games. I know what you're going to do, and it's a harrowing experience, very harrowing indeed, because I've had some, and some more, and some more, and some more. <laughs> oh, it's not getting married that's the hard part, it's sticking to it. Yeah, I know that. Uh, what it is to have your feet on the ground. You know, I can remember when I was your age, I was up in the clouds or as flat on me back in the gutter. You know, marriage to me meant prawn cocktails, white fur coats, snazzy cars, and sweet nothings. And when they all went down the drain, the rest of it went with them. Thank God you're not me. You reckon I'll make it then? Oh, you'll make it. <laughs> yes. only me for a moment of Even with him? Especially with him. Sir Barnacle Bill, the sailor. 
You girls pulling me to pieces? Yes, I was just telling her what a fool she was, but she'll take no notice of me. Good on you, kid. Hey, them invites. If you've got them ready, I'll deliver them on the round. Yeah, they're over by the phone. The top one's for Mike Baldwin. Oh, Elsie, I was going to ask you to put that on his desk. Is that OK, Elsie? Yeah, it's OK, but it's a bit short notice, isn't it? Yeah, well, Bren, the printers, they had to go back. He couldn't read half of them. Oh, marvellous. Right, I'll see you at dinner. Hey, come here, you. Give us a kiss. Mm. Before you go, tell her to eat her breakfast. Eat your breakfast. Oh, my God, it must be love. <laughs> you know, when you married me, Dad, Mum, did you fancy him like? <clears throat> what sort of a question is that, eh? Well, I'm just asking. You know, cos if you was rowing then like you do now, you'd never have married him, would you? Well, he won't say a fella then, would it, kids? They never are. What, you mean he was, like, cool and that? Oh, definitely. Read it on Tommy Steely while he used to sing all his songs to me, you know. I never felt more like... Well, all he does now is snow his flaming head off. Don't get it. Oh, you will. That was to all you. Not to me, it won't. I'll still remember what it was like on my wedding day. Well, I hope you do, kid. I do, honest. But I'll tell you something straight. If you've got one drop of your dad's blood in you, you don't stand a dog's chance. Why don't you kick him out, man? Well, it's better than no. Flipping it. Well, see, you'll find out in this life you settle for what you can get. Like Mum used to say to me, she used to say, chance to find a bloke, you know, it's right for you. And I mean right. Well, it's a million to one chance. But if you're lucky to get one, you know, like, you, you, you cop for him, like, you, cop, you grab him, don't you? Well, it's something to share your troubles with. Yeah, but my dad doesn't share his troubles with you, though, does he? He causes them. Look, you can't have everything. Look, get your snapping and get yourself off to work. What are they? Cheese. Before you start arguing, toss, can I get... Tin salmon housekeeping, you can have tin salmon sandwiches. Till then, well, it's cheese, so I think I'm. I want full whack tonight. Hey, it's not me that doesn't pay you full whack, you know. It's him upstairs in his pit. Talk to him. Oh, don't worry, love, I will. Cos I meant what I said, you know. If he doesn't start paying his fair share, I'm packing my bags and I'm walking out of here. Before you go, fries a couple of eggs, will you? Yeah, I'll fry you. What's the matter with him, then? Well, he just comes to the conclusion that I've got a perfect dad. Oh, you've been mixing it, have you? No, he thought it all out for himself. Of course, Mrs. Lowther buys all her clothes in Manchester, St. Anne's Square. I bet I know the very barra. It's not a barra, it's a boutique. Sorry. Hey, it's not a top hat and tails do at his wedding, is it, Hilda? Been bags and wellies, more like. <laughs> It'll be a posh do, any road. Mm -hmm. I mean, me and Stan do have a certain responsibility, you know, seeing as we're standing in for his parents. Yeah. You've got a good lad there, Hilda. Mm -hmm. Walton University muckcarts. He's done the lot, he has. <laughs> well, I tell you what. His marriage won't finish in the vestry, like some I could mention. Oh, nice one, Hilda. Chalk a one up. I'll chalk one up with a lot of you if you don't get cracking. Yeah. I better you tell them. <laughs> well, I didn't get personal, any road. Didn't get personal? You never know, Tells. Always getting your nasty remarks in just because you haven't been invited to the reception. Invited? We don't need to be invited. We'll be here, won't we? Oh, yeah. Yeah, of course you will. I mean, somebody's got to do the skivvying, haven't they? Excuse me. I'm just about getting sick of her snidey little digs. I'll give her less of your own, then, lovey. And get down the cellar, Fred. We're short of dry gingers. Not always short of around here. Oh. Do you know, I reckon it's the surroundings, what does it? Does what? Makes us all so nice to each other. You see, they say folk are friendlier according to where they live. And when you think what we've got outside, trees, hills, and the sea sparkling behind the factory. Are you going down? Yeah, of course I am. Do you fancy coming out? It's better than round here. You having one of your turns? Well, it's all this talk about weddings. Oh, count your blessings, lovey. I mean, you like me, you've only got yourself to please, you know. And there's a lot to be said for that. Oh, come on, Betty, stop your kidding. You enjoyed being married. Yeah. Of course I did. We were satisfied with less in them days, you see. I won't fancy setting up home these days, I can tell you. <laughs> okay, but the summers make it. Well, there's plenty as don't. <sighs> no use sulking. I'm not sulking. I'm just wondering what happened. We I mean, were going to sell the house, get somebody to work here, build up the business. And what's happened? You sold the house and finished, full stop. Well, give me a chance, I'm looking. It's not easy coming across the right bloke, you know. I mean, there's a right lot of tailors knocking about. There's three million unemployed, Brian. There must be somebody. Well, go on, then. You find him. Open the door up and he'll just walk in. Hiya. Did me boss give you a ring from the meat market? Eh? Oh, yeah. Have you brought it? 
Yeah, it's outside, next to the blue van. And what's the brake seem to, right? Oh, I don't know. Is that what he said? I'm just doing the chauffeuring, me. Yeah, tell him I'll look at it for him. Yeah. On your toddy, are you? Yeah. We're looking for somebody, though. Oh, don't look at me. I can drive them, drive them all. But I don't know what goes on underneath the bonnet. I've got a mate who does, though. Great mechanic, knows a lot. Hey, is he after a job? Yeah, he will be. We'll send him round. I'm promising nothing, but uh, I'll have a look at him. Yeah, OK. Could be about a couple of weeks, so he's not out for a fortnight. How do you mean? Well, he's in hospital. Smashed up this BMW while he was taking it back to a customer. Wraps it right round the number 34 bus. And you know, he had the nerve to sack him while he's lying there with four cracked ribs. Great lad, though. Any road, I'll send him round when I see him. Uh, no, don't bother. Uh, I'll let you know. Uh, I'm after somebody a bit sooner than that. Uh, like tomorrow. Oh, OK, then. Suit yourself. Uh, pick up the motor tomorrow morning, then. Any time after ten. Great. Ciao. Oh, God, that was a narrow escape. You daft, you. You should have taken him on. He could have collected the cars for the MOT test. By the time they got here, they'd have needed rebuilding. Bit slow on the uptake, <laughs> aren't I? Don't know why I married you. <laughs> How did I ever come to get lumbered with a dead leg like you? What have I done now? Nothing, Stanley. Nothing. Same as last week, nothing. And the week before that, nothing. How many times have I asked you to fix that hook for me washing line? Just look at this lot, all over the flags again. I'll, 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 I'll do it. Oh, there'll be no wall to fix it to by the time you get round to it. It'll have fell down like the rest of the house. Why do I go on slaving day after day? I'll get round to it in a minute. It's too late now. Oh. Someone at the door. Just give him a shout, Chuck. Tell him I won't be a minute. Hold on a minute. Get up and open it, you fat lump. Fine. All right, I'm coming. Takes you long enough, doesn't it? Where's the flipping key? It's in the other trousers. Honest, I'm sorry I disturbed you, Stanley. Oh, all left to him, you'd still be stood standing there. And you wouldn't have got your invitation to the wedding of the year. There we are, from Miss Marion Willis and Mr. George Edward Yates. It should be her mother that does that, but uh, we said we'd do the ceremonials, you know. Isn't that lovely? Hey, let's have a look. Oh, don't worry, you're invited. No show without punch. Get up, get up, get up. <laughs> Why have these things always got RSVP in them? You wouldn't think he could have lived as long as he has and not know a thing like that, would you? It's initials, isn't it? It means real silver wedding presents. Oh, hey, watch it. You'll have him believe in you. No, it means reply if you please. RSVP should be R-I-V-P. Oh, it's French, you great ignoramus. I bet you don't know what it's French for, though, do you, Hilda? Oh, yes, I do. Mrs Lowther told me. It's... It's just slipped my mind for the moment, but I do know. <laughs> and it all thanks very much, I do. Oh, wait, um, do you want a formal letter, like, or will you accept our acceptance by word of mouth? I'm taking it as read, on account that if you're not going, I'm not going neither. <laughs> oh, you don't <laughs> think. Ah... This is your lovely day. Soon to do it is. <laughs> what do you got to eat at reception? I oh, no, only asked. So what's the rush? They've got a sale on at Kit Kat and there's a blouse I've got my eye on. Anybody else? Oh, come in, it's a shop. I've uh, just delivered them uh, invitations. And I've got some presents. A coffee maker from Maggie and some fish knives and forks and jams. You know, I've got three sets of them somewhere upstairs, still boxed. And, you know, they've never even seen a slice of fish. Well, we're going to use ours. Oh, hey, that's what they all say. <laughs> to rock it. Wish me luck. Good luck, love. She's after a blouse and a sail. Listen, I've been thinking. Isn't it going to be a bit embarrassing? having Mike Baldwin and Maggie at the wedding. You've been thinking. I've had it on my mind all day. I told Maggie, but she didn't seem at all bothered. I mean, that kid of hers, it is Baldwin's, isn't it? And she's bringing it. With her husband. Oh, well. Life treating you well, then, is it? Not a care in the world. He's got it made, him. Hey, oh, Dave. Hey, you broke that seated while I get this lot sorted out. You don't realise we've only got a quarter of an hour to get this lot eaten, don't you? You and your flaming curtains. Well, don't blame me. Blame that woman in the shop. She never stopped flaming talking. How do? Where have you been? In bed. 
All morning? I had a late night last night, didn't I? I've got to keep some time. <sighs> hey, what, what's for dinner? Well, it's not for you. You'd better get down to that Rovers and get yourself a pie. And when you've eaten it, get in that cab of yours and start earning. Because if you don't put your house on this table tonight, there's going to be trouble with that, Terry. And if you don't stop nagging one, there's going to be trouble with me. And if there's any moving out to be done, I'm going to be the one that's doing it. What were all that lot about, love? Oh, I don't know. It's him and our Terry. The like flaming cat and dog. It's our Jack's fault. He won't pay his fair share of housekeeping. And after he says if he don't tonight, he's leaving home. Oh, I don't know. You try your flaming best. Oh, come on, Vera. What do you expect, love? The fellas, aren't they? Yeah, I suppose that does explain it, yeah. Stay on, my love. Thank you. You know, mate, I reckon we're the only two fellas down here that knows what the quality of life really means. That's what you think, is it? Well, that stands the reason, doesn't it? We're both footloose and fancy free. Got a bit of style when it comes to the schmutter. Both can pull the birds. <laughs> Would you get me another one, please, Fred? Of course I will, mate. What's life if it's not for living? <laughs> Come on, flaunt yourself a bit. It's not every day I have a drink with a press baron. Oh, is that what you are? Well, uh, I own a third share of a free newspaper. It's all gone through, then. It's all legal and everything. Yeah, not a four-month sign. Nice chap, Stan. Do you think you'll get on with him? Hmm. No, I don't see why not. He knows what he's doing, and he's not all that interested in the journalistic side. You're really going to enjoy this, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, I am. I've got one or two ideas tucked away. I can't wait to get onto that typewriter. Well, as long as you don't write anything daft about Prince Andrew. Promise. <laughs> hi. Hello, love. Oh, hi. Won't be long now. Oh, don't remind me. Hello. Oh, hello. I've just put a note through you. So now I'd be delighted to accept and all that rubbish. Oh, good. What are you drinking? Um, uh, nothing, thank you. Uh, I just wanted a word with you. Um, I thought you'd like to know Maggie's coming. Oh, great. Uh, she's probably coming with her husband and the baby. Oh, well, uh, that'd be nice, wouldn't it? Uh, you sure you won't have a drink? No, thanks. I, I just thought you were know. OK, Mike. See you. Bye-bye. Yeah. Well, brushing him off like flies, eh, mate? It's my fatal fascination, Fred. Yeah, well, we've either got it or we haven't. <laughs> Uh, excuse me. Hello there. Uh, my name's Kevin Webster. I was talking to you last week in the pub. You said I could pop round and see you. Oh, yeah. I did a year's training at Whiters. Yeah, that's right. You said there might be a job going. Yeah, there might be. Look, uh, I'm due out any minute. Um, what are you doing for the next hour or so? Nothing. I'll tell you what, then. You stay, you look after the shop. Uh, any phone messages, put them down on this pad. Oh, and, uh, while you're here, you can fix that motor. That'll show us what you're made of. What's up with it? You're the mechanic. I'll tell you what the owner told me when he brought it in. He says it runs OK for a mile or two and then starts spluttering, quitting out. Sounds like carbon out of trouble. Could be. Uh, can I borrow your tools? Well, you can do it with your bare hands. <laughs> I wish you could. Yeah, so do I. Yeah, use what you like. Oh, and, uh, bring yourself a cup of tea. That's part of the job and all. <laughs> OK? Yeah, great. I'll see you then. Vera! Where's your mother? She's gone for something for hard tea. Oh, not flaming fish and chips again. Well, I couldn't get any meat, could I? He started cutting down on the perks at work. You're pathetic, you are. Any hot water? What for? Because I want a bath. You don't think I want to drink it, do you? Don't you ever have a bath? When I'm going out on the town, yeah. Is that what you're doing tonight? Out with your fancy woman? I can do without your clever remarks, laddie. One day you're gonna get a backhander. You'll be getting a backhander if my mum finds out. Oh, aye. And who's gonna tell her, eh? Who is it that knows? I can flaming do without you. Ah. <sighs> oh. Oh, no. Why, oh, is Marion in? No, she's not. You've just missed her. Come on in. Oh, well, all right. I mean, but uh, if she won't be too long. 
Oh, I shouldn't think so, unless she's gone for a fitting, and she would have said, wouldn't she? Come on, have a cup of tea. No, look, um, I'll tell you what, uh, forget it. I'll, uh, I'll tell her myself. Suit yourself? Uh, well, you see, it was about the wedding. I was going to go, but I, I can't make it now. Why not? Marion tells me everything you know. I know a lot of gossip. What do you think? Because Ma Maggie's coming with the baby. Well, it's a, it's a bit Hollywood B picture style, isn't it, eh? Oh, I don't know. I was reared on them and I haven't done so bad myself. And it's not far-fetched, as you well know. Oh, come on, Mike. It's not as bad as you think. Go on and face it. Otherwise, you'll spend the rest of your life wondering when you're going to bump into her around a corner. Go on, face it. Be prepared. No one would miss me. Oh, wouldn't they? You know, Mary and Eddie spend their time talking about the time you lent them the flat to do their courting in. All right, so sometimes I go a bit daft. Them are the times that people remember. Elsie, forget I came. Gladly. It's very good, isn't it? Breathtaking. I wish I could play a musical instrument. Yeah, well, you don't get many like him in Valley Orchestra, love. No, but I mean, it is something, isn't it? You know, there are some musical compositions that are played by very strange instruments. Are they? Yes. Haydn's toy symphony, for instance. Now, that's played with kazoos and little toy drums. Ah, and... yeah. You wouldn't credit it, would you? Gosh, can't you see we're in here, lass? Uh, Popped in for a bowl of soup, did he? Yeah, him and his mate. Yeah. One way of replacing the tools of uh, your trade, I suppose. I noticed you didn't get your spoons back. Oh, no. Good job they don't play musical tills. Fetch them back if they're not tuned proper, love. Oh, it is dishonest, isn't it? Oh, you'd be surprised what folks pinch from places like this. If it's not nailed down, they'll take it, love it. It's society's going through a terrible phase, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, well, that part of it that comes in here is. <laughs> Give us a pint of bitter, Betty, and a bowl of hot water. Oh, dear, have you had an accident? No, I've got new shoes. Oh, well, I can sympathise. You know, it takes me a fortnight to wear in new shoes. Could it not take that long? These are for the wedding. Ah, oh, it'll be worth it. <laughs> and you know what they say, you have to suffer to achieve real happiness. Yes, and some of us never get past the suffering. Here's one that could tell you. Oh, she carries it off very well, doesn't she? She does. Yeah. What's that, then? We're just talking about you, then. Oh, well, that's Mark Fresh. He <laughs> give me lad away his pint, and I'll have, um, I'll have one of them Cambry and soap. Bye, eh? they make us look like peasants, Dogdins, don't they? Oh, don't, don't talk to me about peasants. Oh. Do you know the tone of this street's gone right down since that like people moved in the other side of uh, Elsie Tammer? Ah, you're talking about the dog was. We know, Stanley. Blackguarding each other from morning till night. You can't go past the house without the shouting their heads off. Thank you. Right, I'm off. Hey, you stop where you are. You're not budging till you put your share of housekeeping on money on that table. Right. Here's my share. Come on, let's be having it. There are you. 30 quid each. Come on, you heard your mother. I'm waiting for you. Well, I've only had the cab out a few minutes this afternoon. And what are you doing rest of the week, then, eh? Busy with your lady friends, were you? Don't kid me, you haven't been earning it. It's a bad month, isn't it? I mean, nobody takes cabs this time of year. Well, every month's a bad time, according to you. If sun's shining, everybody's walking. If it's raining, everybody stops at home. Yeah, well... 30 quid. Come on. Right. 23 quid. And that's me, skint. Search me. Go on. Search me. Look. I won't lower myself. Look, if you don't believe me. Come on, love, let's be having yours. Right. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three. And he can have the other seven when he coughs his up. What do we get landed with a son like him, eh? You did your fair share. More than your fair share. Look, I'll give you the other seven when I come in. Oh, don't worry. Put it through letterbox, because I'll tell you what, if you do, I'm not locking that door. Sorry, I'm late, lad. Got a look in the traffic. Flaming murder out there. The United's at home. Oh, that's what it is. You didn't want to go, did you? No, it's okay. 
I can't afford it these days. No, I bet you can't. Fancy a cup of tea? Wouldn't say no. Two sugars? Yeah. I won't stir it up for you. My mum said it's bad luck to stir someone else's tea for them. We don't want any more of that, do we? <laughs> no, we don't. Well, your tea's not bad. What about the mortar? Cracked it. Well, at least I reckon I have, anyway. It's hard to tell, really, till we get it on the road. What was it? Well, I tried the carburetor, and that was OK. So I had a look at the plugs and the timing. And there's not wrong there. Then I remember a car we had in at Whitehead with the same trouble. So I had a look at that, and that's what it was. Is your name Alfred Hitchcock or what? Hey. All this flipping suspense. Oh, it was a faulty coil. Cut out when it got warmed up. I've given it a good running. Used a bit of his petrol, but it seems all right. That's it, then. Get your men motors. Make tea. What are you doing tomorrow? Nothing. Yes, you are. You're working for me. Honest. Fill that up. We'll talk about money. I won't let you down. You better not, either. There's three million people unemployed out there. Yeah. I know. I've got too much to do for Monday, haven't I? Oh, aye. And what's happening on Monday? I'm getting married and look at me, I'm snowed under. I've got lists for this, lists for that, wedding guests, shopping lists, things to get before the honeymoon. I'll have that many lists in a bit. I'll need a filing cabinet to put them in. Oh, you're having a right beano with yourself, aren't you? Oh, when party list? Tonight? Hey, hey, cool it, calm down, it's here somewhere. We did have a bit of Jackson's chippy paper last night. Here it is, look, come on. No, I don't mean that, Elsie. What I mean is, it's the end party tonight, and I haven't even got my wedding dress you yet. You have got it, it's just been altered. Yeah, well, I'd feel a lot more secure if it were here. Oh, you'll never guess what I dreamt last night. I shudder to think. Go on. Wedding march struck up. I come walking down the aisle in a pair of old jeans and an old cardie, and people started muttering and walked out of the church in disgust. <laughs> It was only a daft dream, wasn't it? Oh, yeah, but supposing it doesn't turn up, then what's going to happen? Look, Marion, love, wouldn't you say a dressmaker who couldn't get a wedding dress to a last in time for a wedding day wouldn't be in business very long? No. No. Well, Rowbottoms in Yorkshire Street have been there for nigh on 80 years. It's true, established 1903. My mum got her wedding frock there, and I got two of mine. So just stop <laughs> panicking, will you? <laughs> Oh, all right. Eee, it must be nice to be worldly wise sometimes. Worldly well, wise? I'd be a right gormless woman after all that had happened to me and I hadn't learned a bit of sense by this time. Matron of honour. <laughs> I am not being best man, and that's flat. Nobody's asked you, have they? For they do ask. Uh, it's all fuss, that's all it is. I want to find a quiet corner and drink the lads off. Yeah, well, you keep sober and all. Cos don't forget, you and me's going to be honorary parents to the group. That's a lot more fuss. Got to be single to be best man, Stanley. That rolls me out. I'm not single. Oh, that's finally sunk in, has it? Good. Well, happen you'd like to get out and earn some wages for a change? How can I? We need to fall fussed up with this. Oh, it's not fuss. He's only got to get his passport and his honeymoon tickets and find the best man and look around half a dozen flats. Well, Marion could do that. Be a good experience for her. Now, that's enough. If you're not just going out cleaning no windows, you can just get in the back kitchen and wash them pots. Right, I will. You will? Now, yeah, Mr. First Wonder, if you want to get married, then get married. I don't mind. But marriage or wedding means women, and women means fuss. So I'm going. You know, it's being so cheerful, it keeps him going. <laughs> Great breakfast, this, Hilda. Ah, well, you need the energy, don't you? Say that again. Mm. I mean, you know this uh, best man problem? Mm. I must be going through about four million calories a day. Ah. It's a bad sign, that, isn't it? Not being able to find anyone for me best man. I mean, it doesn't say much for the sort of blokes I've knocked around with, does it? <laughs> Stand there in the washing up. Uh, I don't uh, believe it. Hey, hey. Uh, Here I am, kid. All stacked up and ready to go. I said they're half eight. Well, it is half eight. Tonight, you jock egg. Tonight? Stack dues is all day dues, aren't they, Stanley? Oh, that's a good idea. I'll get some glasses. Get off! Cough up, I said! Look, Vera, how can I cough up what I've not got? Yeah, you've got your line pig. You were out in your cab last night, weren't you? Yeah, I know I was out. And if you were out, you must have been earning it. Well, that's why you're wrong, cos I got done, didn't I? Because a fella flagged me down in Market Street and said, can you take it to Macclesfield? And I said, right, get in. And when we got there, I said, thanks very much, that'll be £13.50. And he said, you're not on, because it's a legal ride. Because I am not allowed to be picked up in a minicab. 
and he said, right, you're getting out, and he flirted. Well, so why don't you get after him then? Because he was in the right, wasn't he? Because you're a flipping liar, me. You earned money last night, Jack Duckworth. I know you did. Have you been in my pockets? Yes. You what? You have? You haven't. Well, I'm flipping driven to it, aren't I? You're like a big kid, you up and down. Why don't you flaming thieve it then, eh? Because I wanted you to hand it over, didn't we, Terry? Yeah, it's only right, innit? I mean, yeah. I don't want to keep my mum short, but I don't want to be done by you, neither. Right, that's me float for today, that. So what am I going to use for petrol, eh? There's your stinking money. It's not my money, Jack. It's just part of your housekeeper, honey, that's all. See you, love. So right, Mum. Bye, Jack. Get lost. Well, it's impossible to run a garage you want. I mean, take this particular manoeuvre. I mean, if I was on me toad, no way. I'd have had to farm it out. Yeah. All right, we're hopeless. In fact, I, I got that cheese duffer. I need to give the old player something when better win a grease monkey. Or quids in then. Must be well off now if you can afford to pay me. You being sarcastic? No, no. I know it's not to you, but it's a fortune to me. No, I'm grateful. Very grateful. Hey, when I get my pay packet on Friday, all my mates are coming out look at it. What for? Because you've never seen one. <laughs> get off. That's been made a big difference already, you being here. I mean, having two coming together. Makes the job more enjoyable, for one thing. Aye. Plus, if someone to boss about. How do you mean? No, I don't mean you're boss, eh? I mean, what's the point in being a boss if you've no one to boss about? I get your drift. Anyway, you did right holding on to it. I'd like to be running my own place when I get to be your age. <laughs> and what do you think I am? Old enough. I mean, to be running your own place. I not... think I'd better get away and get that part before we have a fight. I'll see you about two. Uh, shall I get in the exhaust before they have my dinner? It's only 25 too. Uh, make sure the words. As long as you've done it before they get back. Oh, very nice of you. No, I mean it. Hey, you. What do you think you're doing? Reading my heart, Mike. Oh, really? Is it good? Yeah, very good. It's 24 pounds. Pull out extra and I'm rallying. Oh, I'm very pleased to hear it. Where's Brian? Oh, he's gone for a pack. When will he be back, love? Er, uh, two. Unless he decides to stop off somewhere for a pint. You know what these executives say? No, I don't. No, what are they? Well, I suppose thirsty sometimes. Are you trying to be funny? Well, I'm not trying very hard. Well, you'd better get some work done, aren't you, love? Right? And when Brian comes back, tell him that his mother's called round. And you can tell him that his mother's caught you sat there reading a magazine, all right? Cos if you don't, I will. Hey, have a one with me, lovely. No, thank you. Oh, go on, go on, have one with me. Hey. Not every day it's very snagged, you know. Put tight on your tongue. I've got one, thank you. I don't need another. Hey, come on, this stag do starts at 8 o'clock, so I've been told. Let's be having you. Only try to spit a bit of sunshine. You what? I said the pies are not bad. Come on, let's be having you. You'll be ending up minced inside one of them if you're not careful. Stop over there. What's the way in? The girl on the wrong side, it's tied, isn't it? Hey, I like it, hey. Hey, what a lovely girl. This is my time. Here's a kiss. Drop off. Oh, come on, stop playing hands again. Dear God. Do you know, Betty, we're going to have to get a mop and book it out for him any minute. Yeah. All right, come on, you lot. Oh, yeah, no, get on, get on. Get on, get on. Game on. Oh, oh, game on. Game on. Game on. Oh, you know, I'm dead into that, aren't you? Do you remember the last new Eddies when, when them two spits came from Liverpool and were putting whiskey in everybody's beer? Then they got the piano in the street and then the police came. Well, at least Mrs Walker's out of the road this time. That's what's worrying me, love. Come on, Betty, make like you've got a mortgage on that. Hey, 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 Oh, my glad to see you. What's up? Oh, nothing, just a fresh bin. It's unusual. Shall you show him the yellow card? No, he's gone now. I don't think he's going back. At least not till today. Oh, here you are. Hello, Mum. I've just called round to Gary's to see you, love. What oh, for? Well, no reason, really. I just fancied enough, so you know. I've got time for a natter, Mum. Not at work. Really? 
Didn't look like that to me, Brian. In fact, it looked like holiday camp if that new young lad's out to go on. He seems a right little cheeky devil, doesn't he? Is he, yeah? He's just new. Well, what have you been saying to him? I've said nothing, Brian, but I caught him sat reading a magazine. That's probably broke for his dinner. What, a 20 to 1? Is that all right, then, is it? As long as he's done what I told him about the time I get back, yes. Well, it seems a right slack way of carrying on, love, if you ask me. Nobody did ask you. You what? Yes, love. Uh, fine, please, Bet. Uh, whatever Gail's having. Can I get you a drink, Mum? No, love. I think I'll go across the road and keep my eye on those over there. Because we do things proper over there. It's a bit uncalled for, wasn't it? No. She's got to learn to stop poking her nose. Fancy the natter. Ketchup. Ketchup. You all right? Yeah, why? I just looked a bit worried. So, what's the progress report? What's the best man situation? Oh, sussed. I've asked Norris. Who's Norris when he's at home? Only my best ever mate, that's all. Oh, so good you've never mentioned him before. Yeah, well, our ways got divided. Anyway, when I phoned him and told him what it was for, he was over the moon. Hey, it's gonna be great. Not as great as marrying me, I hope. Oh, get off. What could be as great as that? <laughs> hey, come on. There is something worrying you. I've been to look at a couple of flats. Oh, they were horrible. Dead pokey and damp. So what are we gonna do? I mean, we've as good as said goodbye. What are we gonna do? I don't know. All I do know is it's gonna take time. <sighs> and that's something we've left ourselves without. I didn't know it was your mum, Brian, honest to God. Whoever it is, you should be nice. I weren't not nice. However it were, you upset her, and you shouldn't have. I don't know how I did it. I just couldn't work out who she were or what she wanted or anything. Before I had a chance to find out, she took the off and vermoosed. All happened too quick for me. Well, anyway, she's not herself at the moment. My dad's in hospital. Oh, no. I'm sorry, Brian. Oh, flipping it. Do you think I should go round and apologise? No, leave it now. No, but if I've upset... I said leave it, Kevin. Just remember when I go out in future, eh? In future? Yeah, be polite and helpful to people when they come in. If we're gonna make a go, but we've got to pull together, haven't we? You mean, I've not got a boot, I can stay? Have you ever got the boot? Oh, thank God for that. I'm not gonna suck you over something now. Something out? Insulting the boss's mum? He didn't insult her. I upset her though. Kevin, now let's leave and get some work done before I change my mind. Aye, right, let's. I see it's finally arrived, has it? Of course it has. Oh, hey, what do you reckon? Oh, you're gonna look smashing in that kid. Hey, it's still fitted round here, though, look. I mean, they've not let it out so much. It didn't we? need letting out. Yeah, but I don't want it to show, Elsie, do I? It won't show, because there's nothing to show, and even if there was, you'd be holding a dirty big bunch of orchids down there, wouldn't you? Yeah, but I can't help feeling how much nicer it would have been if we hadn't had to consider it. Oh, don't talk so daft. You love each other, don't you? Of course you do. The only time when a doings like that is bad is when a couple don't love each other and they get married through fear. Yeah, well, you try and tell my mum that she'll kill me if she finds out. She's not going to find out. Now, let's get this party started. Now, look, two tonne of nuts, two tonne of crisps, biscuits, oh, and some bottles of Robert's Vino Collapso. What's up now? Well, it's just some Eddie said to me at dinner. Oh, my God, it's not all off, is it? No, it's not that I'll see. It's just that he hasn't been able to find us anywhere to live, and it looks as though it's going to be a lot harder than we thought. I mean, you see, there's just another thing that's being caused by everything having to happen so quickly. Why don't you stop here, then? Both of us? Why not? You'll be wet. It'll be decent, won't it? Yeah, but you said you were looking forward to a bit of peace and quiet. Lies and muck. I was dreading it, really. <laughs> oh, Elsie! <laughs> oh, thank you, love. <laughs> well, now, come on. Open one of these bottles and let's see if we can get ahead of this party. Right. <laughs> Don't fear, I've had a bad day. Oh, I want is a measly Hello, Hello, is your man ready? Oh, don't you ever see him. Oh, 
Hey, you come back here! I won't be a minute, Ivan. You come down with that down, leave it where it is. Lovely come back. Yeah. Where? In the yeah. Chamber of Horrors? Drag him around and twist it, really, yeah. I don't remember him rhyming like this before I went away. Well, they did, love. Yes, they did. I mean, no, this is nothing. This, this is just a blind discussion. I'll never stick it. I'm used to a quiet life, me, you know, shelling, bayonet practice. Hey, Terry, don't go deserting, love. They're both glad to have you back home, aren't they? But how am I going to cope, love? Well, you have to start and see funny side, love. All right. Here, take it. Get lost. Go on, get lost for good. My little butterfly. Out! There's Ruby Flame in hand back. Look at it. Oh, and look. Lipstick on my nose, eyelashes on my chin. Vera, Vera, I'll go and wait for you to tell us. It's all right, love. Yeah, all right, kid. Sorry to hold you up, you know. It's all right, love. Hey. What? Have a quiet little word with your tea, all right? All right. I'll swing for him, kid, I will, honest. Is your tea nice, Arthur? Yeah, it's, it's all right. Look, oh. is that seven quid earlier? Oh, no, could you keep it? No. He's setting his back now, hasn't he? No, you hold on to it, he'll, he'll think he's got away with it. Look, man, take it. I don't like arguments, mate. How is Bert now, Ivy? Eh? Oh, oh, love. Well, I look at him now, he, he looks samey. He seems samey. He even asks me the same questions about the same things, but... Well, man I married, he's, he's gone for good, love. Oh, excuse me, love. Hey, Ivy. Come on. Buck up. I know things aren't going well for you at the moment, but cut the gloom and do them. I'm not being a gloom, Pat. I'm else. Yes, you are a bit. As I say, I know things aren't going well for you. And I know also that we'd all put Matt marrying off marriage for life if we wanted to, but under oh, circumstances. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It's Mavis. Oh, hello, Mavis. Hello, 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 Mavis. Nice to see you. Hello, Ad. It's nice to see you. Yes. I've brought you this, Marion. I hope you like it. Oh, lovely. What is it? It's Lee Frau Milch. Eh? That's mother's milk. No, it's wine, really. <laughs> oh, lovely. <laughs> oh, can you hang on a minute? Yes. Have you got a corkscrew? Ah, I'll do it for no, you, maybe. No, don't no, you worry. worry. Oh, well, it's on there if you want it. Oh, I'm sure you can manage. Right. Hey. <laughs> oh, I said, it must be a lovely time for her, really, mustn't it? All the little traditions and superstitions. I mean, it must just be like having a great big Christmas, only more exciting, but, well, a little frightening, too, I should think. Are you kids? Hiya, Vera. Oh. Blimey, if we sat in a row, it'd be no different to being at Wetwood. Except for Marion and Mavis. <laughs> oh, that'll be Mrs. Ogden. Hey. Oh, a shake coming. Now, don't start that. No, come on, help yourself to a drink. It's on here. Yeah, I'll have a double and all. That flaming lazy husband of mine's got me all whipped up. Do you know he makes my life a misery? He does, really. Are you all right with that, Mavis? Can you? Yeah, manage? no, I felt it give a bit. Yeah. <laughs> What would you like to drink, Mrs. Ogden? Oh, uh, well, you wouldn't happen to have uh, a glass of Char Bliss, would you? You what? She means shabbly. Oh, I oh. know what I mean. <laughs> and Mrs. Lowther and me often partake of a drop when I've done my cleaning. Oh, is that why they call it Char Bliss? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. It's called Char Bliss because that's the region what it comes from in oh. France. Oh. oh, I see. Well, would you settle for a glass of Robert's Vino Collapso? Right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that'll do nicely. Thank you very much. Well, here's to Marion. May she be very happy together. Hey. Hey. With Eddie, like. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and have a right nice end party yes. here tonight. To marry him. Oh, yeah. oh. oh. Today, you've got someone for best man's job, then? Yeah, yeah, I have, Curly, yeah. I could have done it, Eddie. I've been working on my speech. Quotations from Spencer, classy stuff. Yeah, but that's just it. I mean, with you being so brainy, well, your average wedding-going punter, he's going to get flummoxed, isn't he? Fred, give us another shot. Rubbish. What is? That I say things that people can't understand. What's that supposed to mean? I say, uh, this uh, Norris Stevens business, is, is it an alias, like? What do you mean, Fred? Well, didn't you know he could get parole to be a best man? Look, Fred, I'm very happy tonight. I don't need to floor you to feel ecstatic. Give over, I'm only joking, mate. Yeah, well, your jokes stink. Every flaming one of them. 
Oh, Mike, what are you having? Get a big one for Mike. It's all have Come yeah. here. Yeah, well, I suppose I deserve a bit of credit, yeah. Yeah, well, if it hadn't been for you taking on Hilda in... Well, we won't go into that, eh? Glad to be of assistance. I just wish the fact to do the same for me. Cheers. Wish you all the luck in the world, mate. Cheers. Hey, Jack! Jack, what are you having? Uh, I'll have a quick drink with the etiquette. Right, sir, a large scotch for Jack. Are you rushing off? Yeah, but if I won't be here, I couldn't see. I've been with you all night, all right. Read me loud and clear, mate. Right, I think that's it, sir, Fred. Here we are. What about mine? Go oh, and get yourself a half. Yeah. A half? Well, unless you do quarters. <laughs> <laughs> Being your charming self tonight, I see, Fred. Turn me. I'm failing miserably. Oh, I don't know. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. I heard you teasing him on this stag night. Now go on and wish that lad luck. Go on. What, you don't mind if I join him? It'd be nice to get him from under our feet, won't it, Fred? All right, I knew he'd be sick. Oh, give over, mate. Look, let's fill in the hatchet. No hard feelings there. Go on, put it down. Oh, and you big daft thing. Come on, take it aside. I can still remember walking down the aisle with our Jack holding him up and saying, Wait till I get you in that limousine, lad. I'll kick your head in. Go on, Vera. Tell us again what happened at the reception. Oh, no, I'm not telling you what else. Hey, listen, what about you, kid? Tell us about you. You're expert on weddings round there. <laughs> yeah, for quantity, not quality. <laughs> Thank you very much, Hilda. Perhaps I did set my sights a little too high. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm not giving up or anything, I'll tell you that. Now, all them years you spent looking for Mr Wright, and I found him in one. <laughs> oh, 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 big fat stand, you know. It's quarrelling, I've heard you. Well... <laughs> I just said that all married couples have the differences, don't they? But I'm sure you realise you're all very lucky, really. Oh, oh, I'll drink to that, maybe. Oh, you. As for Marion and Eddie, well, I just think they're ideally suited. I didn't really oh, hear you. Thank you. <laughs> well, you are, kid. Hey, you're both of a size, are <laughs> you? <laughs> hey, what's that supposed to mean? <laughs> Well, pleasantly plump, Pierce. What's wrong in that? What are you getting at? Hey. Look, it's all right, Mrs. Ogden. Vera didn't mean out. I mean, there's nothing wrong in being plumpish, is no, there? No, no, no. I mean, we'd much rather enjoy our food than worry all Course the time. Of course you would. What I'll go along with, Mavis, is to marry Ma Marion and Eddie. Yeah, yeah. Because they're both good-hearted, they've took the time, and they'll finish up friends in the end, and that's the most important. Right, right, right. 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 Vera, so. Yeah, and they're always there when you need them. Oh, wow. yeah. Marion and Eddie, God oh, bless them. God bless, God bless you. God bless you. Good luck. Good luck. Yeah, but why Eddie? See, he knew me, did Eddie. He knows what a mess I've made of my marriage. See, lads who know me don't usually take the plunge. So, I uh, think it might be something fishy, eh? Oh, yeah, definitely. It's a mystery. Think she might be uh, up the spout, like, you know. Hey, up the, the spout. spout, you know. Oh, you mean. Uh, oh, so the cat's out of the bag. Good. It is now, Oggy. No, you've told us. Hey, Yatesy. This made Marion of yours. Uh, she's up the spout then, eh? You are? Well, uh, Stan's just been telling us. Stan? Yeah. What's all about this uh, this model of virtue, eh? All this lovey-dovey malarkey. It's a shotgun job, is this? Listen, Fred, it's not funny. Now, shut up. Trust you to get mixed up in something like this, yeah? I'll flaming kill you! Now, pack his head! You dapper of devils! Hey, hey, break his heart! Get behind this back! anything you want, you yates. Can't have a decent night out without scrapping. What's going on? I'm making us some breakfast, aren't I? You're eating breakfast? Yeah, what's wrong with that? Nothing. Except you're supposed to be too excited to eat on your wedding day. I am excited. Oh, aye. Happy, excited, or just hysterical. Bit of both. Aye. So you should be. Supposed to be the happiest day of your life. Now, you're not going to give me a lecture on the facts of life, are you? A bit late in your case, isn't it? I'll see. But there's one thing I will tell you. Work at it. Your marriage, I mean. Give it everything you've got. Enjoy it. And I think Eddie will be happy too. Women's live would murder you for that. Only me. What about him? <laughs> He's a fella, you see. They're not very bright about things like that. You see, they never know when they're well done to, so you have to keep showing them. Otherwise, they start following a football club or adopting a pub or something like that. Did you do all this? No, I didn't. 
a matter of fact, I seem to resent fellows who didn't quite come up to my standards. <laughs> and look what happened. Well, thanks for the advice, Elsie. Now, can I tell you something? Go on. You look terrible. Oh, I feel terrible. I think I had too much of that cheap plunk last night. In fact, I'm sure I had too much of that cheap plunk last night. <laughs> How did you do it? Falling down drunk, were you? I was not falling down drunk, Hilda. I was just... You had a punch-up in the Rovers with Fred G. That big fat lad. A punch-up? Why? What were you fighting with Fred about? He cottoned out at a shotgun wedding, that's what. It is not a shotgun wedding, Stanley. Fred G cottoned on. How? Stanley let the car out of the bag. Oh, well, of course, I might have known it'd be you. Beer talking, was it? Tongue clacking like a rattle? Too drunk to know what you were saying? I thought you'd been told. That's what it sounded like. Right? Is it very obvious, Hilda? Eh? Hey? The eye. Well, let's have a look. Hmm. Obvious enough. Of course, it wouldn't matter on a boxer, but you're supposed to be a bridegroom. Any road, the eye's not your only problem, is it? Now, if it's got out about Marion, if it's all round the Rovers, well, it could get to other ears, couldn't it? Like her mother's. Oh, no, that shouldn't happen. Not till after the wedding, anyway. All the same. I think Marion should be put in the picture. Told what's happened, just in case. What do you mean, me tell her? Oh, no, no, not you. No, it's unlucky to see your bride on the wedding day before the actual ceremonial. No, I'll have to tell her. Yeah. Oh, fellas. I don't know why we bother with you, I don't, honest. You're just like kids when you're left on your own. Trouble is, you think you're being men. I don't know. Talk about starting off on the wrong foot. Everybody who thinks you had to club you to get you to the altar. Shut up, cloghead. It's only me. Can I come in? Come in, Elder. Oh, where? Well. Everything uh, under control, is it? Of course. We have had weddings from this house before, you know. Yeah, including your own. <laughs> is there something up, Elder? Well, yeah, there is, I'll say. It's not Eddie, is it? I mean, he's not ill. Or not still pie-eyed. Oh, no. No, Eddie's all right. Well, he... No, no, what it is, you see, it's got out about Marion in the pub last night. Damn, a blast. Who blabbed that out? Oh, I've no idea. No, only I, I thought that uh, Marion should be told, and uh, Eddie thinks so as well. Yeah, so do I. Before she starts wondering why people are giving her sly looks. Yeah. Where is she? She's in her room. She's just had a bath. Oh, right. I'll uh, go and see her then. Hey, you wouldn't come with us, would you, Elsie? Yeah, sure, Elder. Well, I'm sorry, I'm not changing my mind. I still love Eddie. Uh, Elder's got something to tell you, love. Well, well it, it's nothing to worry yourself about. <laughs> well, in a way, it is. Oh, come on, Mrs. Ogden, get to the point. Well, uh, folk know you're, uh, you know, expecting. You mean besides us? Yeah. It, uh, it come out in the pub last night. Well, how? Nobody seems to know. Well, you know what they're like at these bachelor do's. Any road, uh, I thought it best to tell you. Thanks very much, Mrs. Ogden. Thing is, Elsie, do I tell me mum or not? Yes, before somebody else does. Yeah. You haven't got any more bad news for me, have you, Mrs. Ogden? Well, yeah, there is one thing. Um, Eddie's... He's got a black eye. He's got what? Well, it's more red, really, sort of underneath just here. You can hardly notice it. He got in a fight with Fred G. Honestly, it's our fault, isn't it? I mean, we should never let them out of our sight. Well, that's just what I said. <laughs> You've still got time to call it off, love. <laughs> I'll see what he looks like in church. <clears throat> Fred? What? Great. One of your best ever cock. Yeah, big clothhead. What's up with you two? You've only gone and put her to bed, haven't you? Me? Yes, you. She's lying there now with the curtains shut. And she says, and I quote, 
It's every time I absent myself for a few hours, there's trouble. This time I come back to find that my barman has been brawling with the customers. And at that point, a voice trailed off into a long, low moan. It's a terrible sound, Fred. Well, what about me? What about me, eh? That you ain't see. Nearly ruptured me. He should have had a clog in his hand when he hit you. Better still half a brick. Because what doesn't seem to have sunk in with you yet, one of us two can't go to the wedding now. She's got to stop here and get the do ready. She being her. You what? No, I decided when I was coming down those stairs, me being senior member of the staff, I shall go to the wedding and you can stop here and get things moving. Oh, Betty, love, I'm all done up for a public appearance. I might even get on a photograph. Tough. I'll go make my patient a little cup of tea. Maybe it will bring the colour back into her cheeks. <laughs> I was looking forward to today, Fred. Because despite my own conspicuous lack of success in that direction, I like a wedding. Weddings prove that love and affection are still alive and well in the world somewhere today. But you've spoiled all that for me, haven't you? So get your flaming pinny on and get this dog kennel cleaned up. Me? Yes, you. Because to quote Her Royal Highness yet again, I am relying on you all to spruce this place up until it gleams. If we do have to have a bun fight on the premises, at least they'll be able to eat off the floor. Well, no, I mean, I've, I've got the cellar to see to. I've, I've all the booze to organise and... Tough! Is it hanging straight? It's perfect. Now, stop fussing. Well, one of us has got to be all right. I mean, there'll be Eddie with his shiner. <laughs> Will you stop laughing, Elsie? <laughs> I can't help it. <laughs> he was probably defending me, honour. <laughs> Oh, God, that's me mum and me Uncle Wilf. Shall I let them in? Just me mother, Elsie. OK. <sighs> Hello, Mrs. Hello, Smith. Elsie, how are you? She's not changed yet. Would you like to go oh, in? Oh, thank you very Can much. Oh, well, right, love, Doc. Oh, how are you? It's lovely. Aren't you a picture? Give off her, Mum. You'll make me blush. Oh, look at me. I'm filling up before the wedding. It's just that... I never thought I'd see the day. Oh, thanks for the vote of confidence. Oh, you know what I mean. Hey, shouldn't you be ready by now? It's gone 12. I'm nearly ready. Mum, here. Let me straighten your headdress for you. What? How does that feel? I have something to tell you. Yes, well, wait a minute, love, because it's not quite straight yet. There. That's better. Oh, my little girl. If only your dad could see you. I'm expecting a baby, Mum. Pardon? What did you say? I said I'm expecting a baby. I don't believe it. You can't be. I am. I'm three months gone, actually. I'm sorry, Mum. Well, why didn't you tell me before? Because I wanted to wait until after the wedding. Ashamed to tell me? Is that it? No, I'm not ashamed, Mum. I just thought it would be better left until after the wedding. Then why do you have to tell me now, then? Today of all days. Because it got out and I didn't want you hearing it from anybody else. Everyone knows. Everyone at the wedding. A lot do, yeah. Are you not ashamed? No, Mum, I'm not ashamed. Well, I am. I'm deeply ashamed. And if I'd known before, I might not have come. I've said I'm sorry, Mum. What it really boils down to, the truth is, you had to get married, didn't you, Marion? No, I didn't have to get married, Mum. I'm marrying Eddie because he loves me, and I love him. Oh, I don't know. Well, I suppose that's one way of putting it. What time is it? Five past. Is it really that time? Positive. This watch will still be accurate after passing through the digestive system of an humpback whale. Come on, Eddie, you're going to be late. I am not going to be late, Hilda. Will you stop panicking? And you didn't have to press them trousers, they're brand new. Oh, I want you looking smart at that altar. Not like Stanley did at his wedding. Registrar asked, asked him if he'd just got in from Tobruk. Had he? No, he just rolled in from the boozer next door. Oh. And where's this best man of yours got to? He should have been here long since. Look, if Norris doesn't show, we'll just have to put Plan B into operation. Plan B? Substitute best man. Oh. Hmm. He's not a full shilling. Isn't he a bit young? Harry 
allowed. He's supposed to be groomsman. Yeah, well, you know what they say, Hilda. When there's a hole in the jam, you have to stuff it with a bit of clay. I resent that. I'd make a very good best man. I've got all the qualifications. Poise, presence and two A-levels. Yeah, all right. Well, you're on standby. Cheers, Eddie. I'll not let you down. Hey, shouldn't I have the ring? Not till the very last minute. And then I think I'm asking for trouble. Hey, just wait till the reception. Wait till you hear me speech. You'll think you're listening to, uh, Winston Churchill. Or Donald Duck. Now, let's have a look at you. Oh, yes. Yes, very nice, Eddie. I wish I was marrying you myself. <laughs> Car, Hilda. Hey, you don't look half bad yourself. Oh, thank you. <laughs> right, just one last hurdle. Stanley, you ready yet? Or have you got your shoes on the wrong feet again? Stan? Well, by the heck, man of the moment. Oh, not bad, Chuck. Not bad at all. Do you know what? I think we're going to look like the money bags at this wedding. The creme de la creme, Mrs Ogden. Yeah, that and all. <laughs> The car's here. And I'm as ready as I ever will be, Uncle Wilf. You wouldn't care for a little snifter, would you? I've got a quarter bottle in my pocket. No, thanks. And don't worry about, you know, your mother will soon get over it. I'm not worrying. This is my day and nothing's going to spoil it. That's the spirit. Come on. Good luck, Marion. Hey, and if he gives you any trouble, love, just refer him to me. Your carriage awaits, my Thank princess. You. you look like an out-of-work rat catcher in that house. Oh, don't she look selfless? Yeah. But do the brass, don't they? I did. Come on, you was for his service. Heaven's like this, you know, one big massive church. I used to think heaven was a massive toy shop until I started going to Old Trafford. You were? Just cogitating. I'm very prone to it in a church. Are you all right, Eddie? Yeah, I'm fine, thanks, Hilda. Won't be in a minute. Maybe you're wed. Hey, Eddie, when you're at the altar, all your life will pass in front of you, all the happy bits. Like he was drowned in. Here, just shut up, you two. Have some respect. Shouldn't I have the ring now? I mean, your mate's obviously not going. Oh, go on. Here, if you lose it, there'll be another murder in the cathedral. Don't worry, Eddie. I'll be a tower of strength. It'll be like having Clive of India at your side. Hey, darling, tell me Eddie's still a bachelor. He is, just. Who are you? Only the best man. I asked the fellow where All Saints was. He directed me to a jazz club. Are they all heathens round here, or what? They're all Liverpool Lynch comics. Yeah, they have to be. So, Mike. Hi. Baby says a letter's down, would you believe? Oh, there's always something, isn't there? Yeah. Looking well. Yeah, they both are. You cut it a bit fine, didn't you? I'm here, aren't I? Eh? So I'm a player now, what? Of course, yeah. Sorry, Kale. Polish will take over now. It's a bit flipping thick. Look, he is down as best man, isn't he? Where? Where is he down for it? Look, just move a couple of benches back with you. And give him the ring. It is late is a big improvement on young Curly. <laughs> you don't miss a trick, do you, Vera? Well, you've got to be on your toes, you know, when you haven't got much of an husband. Where have you been? Ask him. Well, that's the trouble with thoroughbreds, you see. Very temperamental. Right. Get yourself ready for the longest walk of your life. 
Hey, you look a million dollars, kid. He's a very lucky fellow, you know. Start. Just relax. I shan't be very long. Will you all stand, please? God, our Father, you have taught us through your Son that love is the fulfilling of the law. Grant to your servants that, loving one another, they may continue in your love until their lives end. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. There must be one or two weddings on. No funerals. Dead quiet in there. Mm. Shall I give hand with the sherries? Yeah, if you like. Nice looking cake, that, innit? Yeah, it's lovely. I saw you looking at it. There's still time, you know. What for? Well, for you. To have your own wedding cake. Oh, right, about five minutes. <laughs> oh, if you'd only calm down a bit, Lynch. You know, instead of having bangles up to your armpits and well, just one coat of makeup, you know, war paint. You'd be a very attractive and mature sort of a woman, you would honestly. There's all sorts of fellas be going for you. Fellas, you know, like me. Be a cure mile long to snap you up. Well, thanks very much for your advice, Fred. That's what mates are for. Mind you, I haven't given a boat yet of, uh, you know, getting spliced again myself. Oh. I'm sure there's no rush, is there? All the time of the world. What's the point of settling for your own tulip when you've got your own bulk for you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're very wise, Fred. Mind you, I would have preferred for Eunice and I to have stayed the course. I would have thought we'd have been favourites, me and Eunice. I liked Eunice. Yeah, I know you did. Hey, that was some do, weren't it? Hey, our wedding, eh? Uh, <laughs> weren't you and Eddie Yates fighting at that, too? No, well, I mean, no, that was all about. It was, <laughs> it was when he turned up at the stag door with that stripper. Mm. I don't think she even had a G-string in her bag. No, he only did it to... Uh, that would cause trouble between, you know, more diabolical, that. Mm. And weren't there a kerfuffle with Eunice's dad? Well, he turned up drunk as a mop, didn't he? No, he's like that, his old Sid. I've done it before. He got barred from the over-sixties club, you know. Oh. Turned up cork leg goose in the women. Lovely. <laughs> no, 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 a wedding, you've got to enjoy yourself. Get drunk, meet a few friends, click if you can. <laughs> I'll tell you what. I'm going to get drunk at this wedding. Yates is paying. <laughs> to have and to hold from this day forward. For better, for worse, for richer, for poorer. For better, for worse, for richer, for poorer. In sickness and in health, to love and to cherish till death us do part. In sickness and in health, to love and to cherish till till death do us part. According to God's holy law, and this is my solemn vow. According to God's holy law, and this is my solemn vow. Heavenly Father, by your blessing, let this ring be to Edward and Marion, a symbol of their unending love and faithfulness to remind them of the vow and covenant which they have made this day. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
I give you this ring as a sign of our marriage. I give you this ring as a sign of our marriage. With my body, I honor you. All that I am, I give to you. With my body, I honor you. All that I am, I give to you. And all that I have, I share with you. And all that I have, I share with you. Within the love of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Within the love of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I receive this ring as a sign of our marriage. I receive this ring as a sign of our marriage. With my body, I honor you. All that I am, I give to you. With my body, I honor you. All that I am, I give to you. And all that I have, I share with you. And all that I have, I share with you. Within the love of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Within the love of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. In the presence of God and before this congregation, Edward and Marion have given their consent and made their marriage vows to each other. They have declared their marriage by the joining of hands and by the giving and receiving of a ring. I therefore proclaim that they are man and wife. That which God hath joined together, let not man divide. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, bless, preserve, and keep you. May the Lord mercifully grant you the riches of his grace, that you may please him what you both what in body you and devil. soul, and living together in faith and love, may receive the blessing of eternal life. Amen. And there's more from Weatherfield tomorrow at the usual times. Well, next here on Granada Plus, home of the hits, it's Emmerdale.